King of the universe, Master of all of us, we pray that today, like any other special day, you may bless us, your children. And Father, may you speak your word today once more. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Church. In opening, we will sing hymn number 38, local. Family stand for God. 38, local. Okay, we can turn to him number 181. Does Jesus care?
1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, and it reads, In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in, Je in Christ Jesus concerning you. Shall we honor you the word of prayer? Our Creator in heaven, we come before you this morning, committing each and everyone who has come to worship you. This morning, I commit your man servant who's going to speak to us. Use him as a vessel. Give him word to speak unto us. For we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Morning, church. Uh, it's time to worship our our Lord in tithe and offerings. Uh, we turn our Bible to the book of uh, Proverbs, uh, chapter chapter three, verse nine to ten. Uh, the Bible reading. Honor the Lord with your wealthy and with the, with the first fruit of your, your produce. Then your, your bands will be filled with plenty and your vast will be bursting with wine. So uh, there's something which I picked on, uh, on this verse. Uh, why? we should honor or we should worship our, our God with our, our money. Uh, one of the reasons we should honor God with uh, what we have is it created, it create, uh, man was created by God himself. And uh, the second point is, it is community necess necessity and it provides a way to consecration to our God. And the second point, it reflects the condition of our hearts, where it's written, we can find it in uh, Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 21, where it says, uh, for where, your, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So uh, we can see even to ourselves, when you have money, maybe you have kept it in the bank, uh, maybe your heart will be tempted to, to check your, your account at any time. And the last point is, uh, it supports God's works through the church. So money supports the, the work of the Lord, like in terms of building, in terms of ministries, because with the help of money, we are able to, the church is able to, uh, to, to minister where we are supposed to, the, the word of God is supposed to, to go. Uh, therefore, uh, money is very important and uh, it belongs to God. It's not for us. He gave us and we have to 
to acknowledge, to give it to him. May the deacon work upon us.
te bénis, Dieu. Tu es grand, tu es puissant, tu nous as accordé la vie ce matin. Je rends grâce à ton nom, Dieu. Père Tout-Puissant, nous te remettrons ce qui t'appartient de toi. L'or et l'argent t'appartiennent. Père de grâce, reçois ce qui t'appartient dans le nom puissant de Jésus-Christ de Nazareth. L'or et l'argent t'appartiennent, Dieu. Ça ne nous appartient pas, ça t'appartient dans le nom puissant de Jésus-Christ de Nazareth. Père, je rends la gloire et l'honneur dans ton nom, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Church. Our children's story is coming from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3, and I'm going to do a small summary. Samuel was born after the mother cried for him in the temple, and the mother dedicated him to God, and he, used, and he lived with the priest, and he lived with the priest. So one night, Samuel heard a voice calling his name, Samuel. He went to the priest and said, you were calling me. The priest said, I was not calling you, so just go back to sleep. So Samuel did as the priest said. He heard the voice again, Samuel. He went back to the priest, and the priest told him, the next time you hear the voice, say, Lord, speak, Lord as your servant is listening. So he did as, as, the, servant, as the priest said. He heard the voice, Samuel. He said, speak, Lord, as your servant is listening. So what this story, what this story means is that, is that God can speak to us at any time, anywhere. Amen.
God is good all the time. Um, I, I grew up with my mom. I grew up with my mom. That statement in itself tells you that my father was not present at the time. He was not dead and is still alive up to date. But he was not there. In 1998, my parents separated and they got a divorce. And I am the second born from the family of five in my... Now I have a complicated family. I have to explain uh, how it is. I am, I am the second born. I am the third born. We are the family of five. We are a family of eight. We are a family of nine. Uh, so there's that complication. But at that time, we were just a family of five. And as my parents got a divorce, we went to stay with my father for some time because I was above the age of seven. The court ruled that a child at the bar, at, uh, above the age of seven should stay with the father. Uh, but then uh, we were mistreated somehow. And my older brother, Panji, he was a bit older than myself. I was young, and my immediate young brother, we were very young because we were the ones that were above the age of seven. And so we are the ones who are staying with my father. So uh, staying with my stepmom at the time, uh, it was very hard for us. We went through a number of things. And so what happened is that we decided to run away from our parents' home to search for our mom. And so we, my father then was staying in Kanyama. My mother was staying in the other side, which is in Tendere. So we had to move. I was uh, about nine years old, and my young brother was seven. And we had to move on foot from Kanyama to Mtendere, that side, to search for peace. But while we started staying with... Uh, while we started staying with my mom, I, I, I'm, I'm not able to get the sound. I don't know if it's working. It's working. Okay, thank you. Uh, while I was staying with my mom, my mom was UCZ, and we were all UCZ as a family at the time. So she introduced us to scripture. And so she would encourage us to memorize several scriptures. Every day in the evening when we meet, she would tell us to recite scripture time and again. She understood, despite being uh, of a different faith than which I now possess, that scripture has power. And that scripture will educate her children beyond her time on earth. And so she gave us scripture. Uh, but like any other human being, we chose the easier scripture. Uh, the simple ones, the shorter scriptures. And so my go-to portion of scripture uh, was 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Because in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, you find short scripture like verse 16 has only two words. Rejoice evermore. Uh, verse 17 the next day I'll have it again. Pray without ceasing. I would also go for uh, verse 19 as well. Verse 19, quench not the what? The spirit. I will also do verse 20, uh, which says despise not what? Prophesizing. Even verse 21 was simple for me. It says... Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Even verse 22 was good enough for me. 
Abstain from all appearance of what? Of evil. I would skip to verse 25. Verse 25 says, Brethren, pray for us. Even verse 26 was good enough. I would have covered a number of days reciting scripture because it says, Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. I find up to now this portion of scripture very simple and very easy to memorize. But amidst this simple scripture, there is a deeper verse that I struggled with and I'm about to share my struggle. Verse 18 says, which I skipped earlier on, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. My sermon title is, Does Jesus Care? And singers made it difficult for me as they sang, Come to Jesus, when I'm asking a question, Does Jesus Care? We are in the midst of the great controversy. And in the midst of that great controversy, there is one question that begs to be answered. Is our God a caring God? And from this sacred desk, I'm about to share my testimony and which poses the question, does Jesus care when my heart aches? When I lose the one I've been depending upon, where is he? When I'm calling upon his name and I can't hear his answer. If you haven't read the book, Great Controversy, you are reminded that it is about the same question. Is God a caring God? And this is the foundation of the Great Controversy that we see visibly today and in our own private lives. I, at one point I was at CBU. God had been gracious already. I've started my story ahead. Please stay with me. I'd already been gracious around this time. I was already Seventh-day Adventist. You are wondering how. I'll tell you soon. And at that time, I was the vice chairperson of the campus ministry at CBU. I was giving announcement because it was a preserve of only the four of us to give announcements. The chairperson, myself, the secretary and the vice secretary. So that time I was on duty giving announcement and while I was on duty I saw an old friend in the audience that I had not seen for some time. And I could tell he wondered how I found myself in front of the children of God. He looked at me and he gazed upon me and wondered this guy and as I left uh, the Vespers that day, I remember very well, it was an eve of the following year. It was in, in 2013. As I'm leaving, going, toward, going towards my room, this friend of mine couldn't help but approached me. And he told me for a while, Kupano, let's not go to your room. I want us to go. There's a place which we used to call Gethsemane, uh, where we could go for prayers. He says, I want us to go there. And now, Vespers had ended around 20 hours, and so he said to me, I want us to go there, my friend. And he tells me, you are now the vice chairperson of the campus minister as we are going. I keep on repeating and answering, the Lord is faith. And he keeps on asking me that question. When we reached there, he starts narrating his story to me, and he tells me, there is no God. I, I wondered how he had reached a position that there is no God, because I knew this friend of mine at the time I was joining the church. So he was one of those that was guiding me through the church, and that's why he wondered from the baptism class, how does this guy become one of those that is reading the flock of God? And so, he one, he's telling me, I have met with pastors. 
I have met with elders, and none of them has proved to me that God exists. And today, I have decided to come and say bye-bye for the last time at church. I know you haven't seen me in the while. It is because I haven't been coming to church. I have done my research, and it has proven that there is no God. And I have come. Today, I just came to say bye-bye, to look at the saints once more as I go out. But when I saw you, I was moved to give you an opportunity to prove to me that there is a God. And I have made up my mind that before we clock the new year, I need to seal my decision. So you have between now and midnight to prove to me that there is a God, or I will seal my decision after my start. I'm thinking to myself, I haven't prepared for this. I haven't even studied for this. I don't know even which scripture to go to for this. I'm wondering and I'm thinking to myself, uh, the Lord tells me in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God concerning you. And so I drew him to my story. I reminded him that friend of mine, I found you in the church. Here where I come from. Now, I hope you won't be lost. Now I'm starting a new story in the middle of a story. <laughs> Are you with me? And, and so I'm telling this friend of mine, I'm saying, uh, my parents got divorced where we started from. And, and, and my parents introduced me to a bit of scripture. But because my mom was going all the time to look for supplies for us, she was not present with us all the time. And why would we remain alone? My older brother had already gone to a boarding school. I was the eldest in the family, and I was, I was very young, around nine years of age, and I was in grade five. And so my, my home, which had no parents uh, during daytime, was a place where friends could come to and we could discuss. And one faithful day, we said to ourselves as young people, let us go and buy Chiwuku and say our grandmother sent us and see what it would do to us. It was my genesis of me starting drinking. I had drunk by the time I was reaching grade nine, I was well known within the city of Rusak. Uh, not in good places, of course, in very strange places. I, I remember very well when I was in grade 10, we could go to nightclubs where they are saying 21 years and, and above only, but I'll be granted access. Simply because I was with the people with connections. I had tried most type of alcohol that exists uh, to a greater length. I could come home very late and mom had almost lost control of who I am. I had stopped going to church for years and I had never visited church and had lost and changed and shifted friends to a different set of friends that I had at that time. Trying new things that I was not supposed to. And the only thing I could hear every time I get home is mom praying for me, mentioning my name, and she could pray over and over again. I could get myself in trouble, and mom could pull me out of trouble. She was the only hope and the only source of strength I had. I could come back home and hear, I don't know if it's deliberate, but she could be praying around and mentioning my name, and I didn't care. I thought life was good with my friends. And so I could do all sorts of things. I was addicted to alcohol beyond recovery. I couldn't see myself a day without taking a sip. And uh, I remember very well one time uh, when I sat for my grade nine and we passed our grade nine as a way of celebration, we started beating around people. And so we had, uh, 
we had dealt with some people and they, they came at night to look for me. And they found me in the house and so the, the police officers knocked at the door. Um, when I opened the door, they asked me, uh, is Copano inside the house? I told them yes. As they were entering the house, I was jumping the fence from the other side <laughs> and I disappeared. And so they had quite a number of cases pending at, at, uh, for me at police, at Benwinga police post, and they started looking for me for some time. And I knew that if I get caught, only mom would help me. And so the only thing I, I knew that would help me is mom. My older brother would come for a holiday. Strange enough, he came back as a Seventh-day Adventist. A strange phenomenon. He even said to us, I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> for me, it was more, more meat for myself because my older brother would not take part in meat. My older brother was not very healthy going, growing up in his younger stage, but we were surprised that he was now stronger and screaming as a vegetarian. His new belief shook my mom. And so once in a while, we would invite her to church and she would go there. But even in his strength of inviting people, he couldn't manage to invite me because I couldn't make it again in church. I was too busy for church activity. He even told us he was a member of a missionary group called Impact and he was serving as a treasurer of that group. He would go around and preach the word of God but failing to convince his own young brother. While I was doing all that, I had my own life. Mom had, uh, we call it sugar, diabetes. And so she would get in the hospital and out. And as usual, every time I would hear that she's in the hospital, my prediction would be more, almost as accurate as Erin G. White, that she would be out the next day. And so I would say it all the time when she's in the hospital. I wouldn't even visit her. I would know that it is a usual trend. She will be out in a while. Now, don't look at me as a very wicked man. Uh, we are all saved by grace, amen? And so, this time around, my elder brother comes to me at night and begs me and tells me, you do not even care that your mom has been in the hospital longer than ever before. Can't you just make it a point that you visit your mom? I'm from visiting mom, and her condition is bad. And so I decided I'm going to visit my mom. Anyway, she was my strength, and I'll need to visit her this time around. But my prediction is in my heart, she will be out. And so as I went to the hospital, uh, I'm reaching there, and I'm told, your mom has even lost memory. One of her eyes can't see properly, so you have to be on the other side and she may not recognize you. As I reached there, I realized that she does not recognize a number of things, and she's telling me for truth that come the other side so that I see who you are. And I, I went to the side, and I could tell that she had completely lost weight. She's just there. I looked at her, at her and I'm thinking to myself, can a person survive from this bed? And out of all people, including my older brother that was visiting her often, she couldn't recognize anyone except myself. And she says, Kopano, you are my son. And she tells me, save God. Save God and change for the bed. When we left the hospital, I went home and reflected upon the words of my mom, and I knelt down after some time. Already she had told me about prayer, and I knew how prayer works. And I knelt down, and I prayed to God, and I said to God, God, if you save my mom, I'll save you forever. But if mom will not be saved, then you don't exist. I literally told it was a short prayer, but I meant every word. And so I told, 
I, I, I told my God that and I said amen. There was no crescendo of saying in the name of Jesus. It was just very clear. If you save my mom, I'll save you forever. If you fail to save my mom, you do not exist. Why do you want to claim you are a sovereign God when you can't just save my mom? I haven't requested anything from you for years. I've just come with this one request. You ought to honor my requests. And I left my knees. Early in the morning, the following day, uh, my older brother didn't even sleep in the house that day, looking at the condition of my mom. My older brother went to sleep inside the church at Mtendere SDA church, praying for my mom. So I was still the eldest in the family. When I heard the knock at the door, I was thinking, are these police officers once more? It was too early for anyone to knock. But I remember that my older brother had left uh, for prayers. And so I went towards the door. But as a craver self, I decided not to open the door before confirming who was behind the door. Uh, but before I could confirm, the knock itself told me that bad news was coming. The way the brother who was behind the knock was knocking, it was something else. I asked, who are you? And he told me he was a good friend of my older brother who had picked my brother the previous night to go for prayers. As I opened, I would peep carefully as I remembered my pending cases at the police station. I, I then confirmed that there was only one brother standing. The brother looks at me, and he couldn't say a word. He just, starting, he just started crying, and I knew exactly what he had communicated. I went back into my living room, bypassing my younger siblings, as though telling them that I have no power to comfort you as well. Everyone looking in a different direction, going towards the bedroom. We used to share the bedroom with my young brother. We went there. We all slept facing upwards. And I looked up and confirmed that God does not exist. There started my even strange life. I wouldn't tell you all the details because you stop believing in me. Uh, but just know that God is faith. It is enough. Uh, and, and, and all that, I was, uh, for your own information, I was expelled from school three times. Did I say it right? Yes, you heard me right. I didn't say suspended. I said I was expelled from school three times. And the two times I was expelled, mom was still in existence and she would be the one that would go and plead for me until I am reinstated in school. Uh, the, four, the third time I was I was, I was at Mporokoso because I was also given a forced transfer. I was at Nari Boys. I was given a forced transfer. No school could ac accept me in the entire Rusaka. So I ended up finding myself in Mporokoso. That's where I completed my grade 12. While I was at Mporokoso, we, 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 I, I, I was one of those that the ring leader of a demonstration. So I was expelled once more. I called my older brother in Rusaka because he became the the next king of interest for me and, and the help I had. I called him say, help me register just for exams. I'll come and write uh, in, in Rusaka. So I told my brother, my brother went and attempted to try and register for me. He was told this exam number has been locked. It took, um, I remember it took the Minister of Education to come through at Mporokoso and the provincial education officer to come and reinstate us. We were pardoned because we were quite a number of us. But I was in the top five of the ring leaders. <laughs> but because demonstration, you don't do it alone. We had gathered ourselves the numbers that made us to be pardoned. And when I was pardoned, I remember very well, out of everyone in that, in that assembly, or the headmaster stood up and said my name, Kopano, we know you drink. And should you be found near a drinking place? Because then the minister and the PS said, and, and the, the education um, P, PO said, that if anyone commits any simple mistake or any simple crime, they should be expelled among these five people. 
And the headmaster, when a student says, I, re I know you drink, and should you just be found near a drinking place, you'll be gone. I was staying with my uncle. My uncle said to me, and he said, Kopano, if you can wait, you drink in the future. But for now, if you can wait, and you just write your exams, that would be good. Uh, since my uncle had been very kind to me, I decided to obey my uncle. So I didn't drink until I sat for exam. Towards the exam, my uncle said to me, you can't be in the boarding school. It, people get excited around this time. You commit an offense. So you'll be coming from my home to write your exams. And so I was picked from there. And at the time I was expelled, by the way, it was a lengthy period, so I wasn't even going to school. My friend had moved, and so I went back. I, I remember very well I would go to write my exam in the morning, and you know how rickages are. So they would meet. I desired around that time to see a rickage. But simply because rickages come out at night, I don't know why. Maybe because they have to deal with the devil. I wouldn't have an opportunity. So I would go there in the morning, and, and, and as my friends are coming out of the exam, they would be shouting, Ryu, na kesa. And I'm thinking to myself, am I the only one missing out? When the results came out, however, I was the highest at my school. I was the only one who made it to a university. I had an acceptance letter at the University of Zambia and CBU, and I was trying to pursue even something outside the country. I don't know if they were writing the same thing, but the results, the results we had one of the worst years that year, but I, dis that, but I managed to make it. When I went to the university, when I went to the university, uh, which is CBU, and this is where, you remember the other story? Are you with me? You are not confused. There are two stories. So the story I'm not narrating to you, I'm narrating to a brother. Are you getting what's happening? This is what is happening. The whole story, you are just beneficiaries of the other story. And so what is happening is that I'm saying that story to my, to my friend of mine who has given me up to midnight to convince him that God exists. Romans 8, uh, verse 28. tells me and we know no, no, not, not that we have heard not that we guess not that peradventure we, 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 we are assuming no, 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 no uh, the scripture gives us a guarantee to say and we know uh, that is the statement of fact it, it says of the surety one has in scripture and they're about to say this, Paul makes it clear to say, and we know. Uh, we don't doubt this. Pause for a minute. I like pausing. We are going to another scripture. We'll come and finish this one. Uh, John chapter 9. John chapter 9. The story is of a blind man. Uh, this blind man, there's a question that is posed. Was he born like this? Oh, the father sins. Is it, is it because of his sin? Uh, in verse 23 of John chapter 9, in, ca in case you haven't read it for a while, it says the parents, when they were troubled, they said to this, these Pharisees that were questioning him, how come this guy is healed? They said to, the, to them, he is of what? Of age. Ah. Church, am I of age to testify for myself? Uh, I am of age. That's why I'm able to give the testimony. Now listen to verse 25. When they quizzed the brother, I guess best lawyers were sought, questioning the brother left, light, and sent. And as he turned to them, he said to them in verse 25, he answered and said, I wonder why scripture says answered and said, because you might just answer. But now it says he answered and said, uh, and said to them, listen to scripture, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know that where I was blind, now 
I see. Uh, I turned to my brother that day and told him, uh, he's wondering, because he met me when I was becoming Adventist. He didn't even know the depth of sin I had gone to. And so I'm telling him the details of what I had done before and where God had found me. He's now wondering, are you sure you have done all that? And I'm telling you that I was a sinner, now I know. You might say God does not exist, but I know who I was and who I am right now. Uh, you might say God does not exist, but I remember enjoying the bottle and preaching against it right now. You might say God does not exist, but I remember depending on drugs and depending on God right now. You might say God does not exist. I remember when I would run block, I would look at a loose space, but now I'm looking at a providing God. And I'm telling him there is no greater conviction or book or writing of any man that can convince me otherwise that God does not exist when he put me in the depth of sin into in the heights of his glory. The story hasn't ended yet. I'm sure I want to hear where it ends. And so as I visited CBU my first day, 4th April 2011, and, and as we are seated there, we have no accommodation. When I was going there, my, my, my mother had had already died, like I told you, she died in 2007. Um, I'm going there in 2011. I had reunited with my father, because now that's the only parent. And my father was, a long time ago at the University of Zambia, only told me, gave me 100 kwacha and says, you are 100% buzzard. It means you'll be given accommodation. It means you'll be, you'll be paid. And I'm thinking to myself, paid for my own wisdom. He says, yes, you'll be paid. So don't worry about money. Just have the hundred quarters you reach there, they will pay you. I reached there, I found conditions had changed. I had no room for myself. I needed to pay someone for me to squat. And the hundred quarter was far from what I needed. Actually, I needed to top up something for my registration, which I didn't even have that day. And so I decided to camp with my friends, in, to cut the wrong story short, in a common room where they were seated. And so the, the, the new students come early and the returning students come the following week or two weeks later, depending on the calendar that year. In our case, it was two weeks later. In that very first week when I was staying with these, these brothers, one of those leaders, those uh, union leaders, because they also come early to welcome, came through to our room and says, have you seen, have you seen this broken space? Because it was a common room where they are supposed to watch soccer, so they are just patched. Uh, petition it using uh, uh, planks, card, uh, card boxes, and so, so that to make up two rooms for others to be on the other side. So now there was asbestos on one point where the, which were broken. And so this guy comes to us and tells us, have you seen this broken part? He says, he, we say yes, and says to us, we're 11 of us in there. And he says to us, you should be a prayer of people in here. And we wondered why. And he tells us, say, Every time in this room, there's always one who is demon-possessed. So this thing was broken here because as he was being prayed for, he was jittering and that's how he ended up kicking here. So I hope all of you fear God here. We thought to ourselves as he left and, he started, and we started asking each other's questions and say, ah, do you go to church? <laughs> we want to know who is possessed among us. And so they started, I remember, were, 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 were 11 of us, 11 of us, yeah. I, I, I remember very well, they started with number one, and they would say, I am from UCZ, and I am a BB. I had forgotten about those since I had not gone to church for a long time. And the other one, who is also UCZ, would say, yes, me too. Oh, we do this and this, that. There will be these guys, is from Washtower, and they would say what they do. And I started thinking to myself, if I say I'm from UCZ, they will know. Because I will, have some, I will have nothing to say. So I have to choose a church which no one will say comes from that church. Because I can't say I haven't been going to church. They are looking for who is demon possessed here. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm thinking to myself, so I'm waiting, I'm number 10. Everyone has said, and I looked at, oh, I can say SDA here. 
because no one has said this day and they are a bit, they are slightly unique and I have noticed some few things from my older brother's perspective that I could use to deceive them. And so I said, I'm SDA, only for the number 11 to say, me too. <laughs> and, 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 and now I'm now thinking to myself, and true story, huh? nothing manufactured here. And I'm now thinking to myself, hey, what have I got myself? And lucky enough, we didn't ask a lot of questions because the next session was, ah, can't we all believers? Let's pray. Uh, so I, lucky enough, I wasn't pointed at to pray that day. Um, so they are saying, so Friday came. A friend of mine is ironing around 10 hours. He has already done everything. He's looking at me, I'm doing nothing. I don't know that you are, you are supposed to prepare in advance. Around 16 hours is worried now. He tells me, Brother, have you already prepared for tomorrow? I start thinking and connecting and seeing my older brother. Quickly, I I on something. Oh, ah, sorry, sorry. We went to church that very first Sabbath. I was in church. I sat in this side, and one of the uh, people that was we were coordinating the Bible study asked the question: Can man live without sin? And everyone in the church said. Yes, I said no. <laughs> then they also said no. I, I even raised my hand. I was a confident young man. Eh? I argued to say, I have read the scripture. Remember, mom used to expose me to scripture. To say, all oh, have sinned and fallen short the glory of God. Uh, so we argued. Uh, later on, he called me aside and asked me, are you seven day Adventists? <laughs> I, 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 I first said yes. Because you know when you are right, you have right the first time, you have to be consistent. <laughs> a friend of mine looked at my debates and called me aside also and said, which church do you, <laughs> which congregation do you go to? I decided to share with my friend, I, I said that this time I'll be caught. Uh, I said, uh, I was just escorting my brother some time back. And I decided to join. So, how do you join? Said, I decided. Say, oh, no, there's a process on how you join. And how, this is how he introduced me to that church. Now, listen to the actual introduction of me in church. Why, partly, I chose to join the church. When my mom died during, my, during the funeral, my mom, who was UCZ, and because she was too busy with her business to provide for us, she could miss church very often. As a result, I think members of our church lost touch, especially that even us as the children had stopped going to church. So now when mom died, or during a sickness leading to her death, the church for my elder brother were the ones caring for her. Now, as you notice from what I said, my older brother, myself, then my young brother, we were just brothers as the three elderly people of, 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 of a reasonable age by 2007. 20, so now, to take care of a woman, a lady, it required a fellow lady to help us. And there was a dedicated Dorcas mother, just a churchmate of my, of my brother's church, that would come and help mom. It had become to the point that she needed to be changed clothes, to be bathed. And this dedicated, none of our relatives, she had no business whatsoever. Mom was not even a church member, but every day she was there. When I was not visiting my mom at the hospital, she was there at the bedside, a non relative. And these, now mom is sick, and remember, mom is our provider. So mom is very sick, and guess who is helping us to provide? It is the church. We don't know how. And so that is how I made a decision to say if there is any church I would like to align myself with, it is that church that helps in need. Now listen to what I missed, and I'm about to share and close. What I missed was that it wasn't the church but it was the Jesus that I was questioning that was providing. Amen. 
Now, Jesus decided to use the church so that I could come in the church, so that I could meet someone who is doubting God's provision, and I could narrate my story and tell him on how God provided for me when I thought that mom was my provider and my sustainer. And so God had to say, simply because you are moving your attention away from me, your actual provider, I'll remove this object and still provide for you so that you might know that your mom was not your provider, but your mom was a channel in which I can provide. And in the absence of your mom, I can still provide. I am not in jail. God reminded me to say that you depended on your mom to move you out of jail or out of anything, but I am God. Without your mom, I'll keep you not only out of jail, but out of drugs, out of alcohol, out of any sin, so that I might use you as my servant. And that is how God works. And so I'm talking to my brother and I tell him that I was in sin, but God moved me from all this, and you are telling me there is no God? I have seen his power and have experienced his power. And my brother started crying and said, I believe there is God. Amen. If ever my story helped someone, I'm glad it helped a friend of mine to believe in God. And so, would I prefer to stay with my mom here on earth? I would possibly make that choice. But would if I'm shown on the other side, would I have preferred to stay with my mom here on earth and resurrected in the second resurrection? No. My preference is that I would prefer to resurrect and stay with my mom forever because God had saved me. Now, if mom being here on earth was leading me to destruction be, be, despite being a good blessing, God had to take her away from us so that we may sober up and realize that God is a provider. Uh, and the question is answered. Does Jesus care? Yes. Oh, yes, he cares. I can shout with the song lighter because I have experienced God for myself. And so when the singers say, come to Jesus, they meant a good thing for you. May God help you and may God realize that you are his children and make you realize that you are the one he died for. Oh yes, he cares. Amen. And like the Bible verse, the songwriter says again, I know. I know he cares. Amen. Amen.
Father, some of the saints wonder why some of us are so dedicated to your work. Uh, they question that perhaps uh, we are so excited and our zeal ran out. But Father, when we recall where you have picked us from, wasted years we have spent in the pig pan, away from the grace of God that some of the old members have been enjoying since birth. And Father, we have no choice but to come and save the Lord faith, for he has been great. And Father, when the question is posed against us, does Jesus care? Father, even when we can't rely on a testimony of anyone else, as you said in Revelation 12, verse 11, that they overcome him by the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb, we can just simply tap on our chest and look at our lives and say, Oh, yes, he cares. Amen. For we know, we haven't been told. No, we are not assuming, but we know that he cares. And Father, thank you that you have reminded us that you are a God that can save even the worst of sinners. And Father, chief of sinners, though I be, uh, God shed his blood for me. And Father, there could be someone perhaps struggling in a different line with a persisting sin, lack of finances, lack of provision with children that have stepped out of the house despite being introduced to your word. How, Father, we pray that you are a caring God. May you take charge of such particular instances. Father, these are your children, and I can guarantee that each one of them is carrying a different burden. But I'm about to pray a prayer of faith, and I'm about to pray to a God that answers prayer. That, Father, whatever they are struggling with, take care of it in a divine way. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray, with thanksgiving in our hearts. For in everything, we ought to give thanks. For this is the will of the Lord concerning us. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, church. Um, I just like to come everyone to uh, our worship this morning. I, I, I take note of uh, the expressions. Uh, welcome to Saga Centro. Thank you for the wonderful of singing group. Uh, can I just see the presence uh, of anyone apart from expressions that are visiting with us? Any visitors that are visiting us um, this morning? Please stand. The church can welcome you. Uh, thank you, my brother. Any other visitors visiting with us this morning? Thank you, Mom. Church, we have three uh, members. I'm not too sure whether you're Adventists or you visiting us from any other church or congregations. Nonetheless, please feel free. Uh, feel welcome to worship with us at Osaka Centro. What does the church say? Amen. You heard that. Please stay with us. Thank you very much. Uh, just, just, just quick reminders on, 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 um, on announcements. You have the cholera alert, and I'm sure that this must be dying down by now. And then uh, security alert as well. Keep to your chest what belongs to you in terms of phones and whatever gadgets. Uh, not everyone that comes here comes to worship. There are some that come for other businesses, which includes, uh, at the end of the day, members losing some stuff. Um, the DOCA Society is making an appeal to church members for um, contributions either in monetary terms or clothes or whatever it is. Um, there's a rally taking place between the 28th of this month and 4th of May somewhere around 140 kilometers from here uh, along Mumba Road. So the DOCAS is asking for, you know, uh, this contribution so they can go and help uh, to give to the, to the needy in the area. There are four numbers in the bulletin that you may contact should you wish to uh, make any donation. Um, church members are encouraged to read Spirit of Prophecy, and particularly for uh, this quarter, uh, we're looking at the Great Controversy. And beginning tomorrow, we'll be reading Chapter 8 uh, of the book. And this afternoon, we are all encouraged to be here. Uh, we need to engage in the exercise of distributing 10,000 books, 10,000 copies of the book great controversy. And then we will get back here by 16.30 uh, for uh, Vespers. There's an announcement from Treasury. Uh, please take a look at the, the bulletin once again. The, um, um, there are four um, channels through which church members are encouraged to uh, give the, uh, their, their donations or uh, tax returns and offerings to the church. Uh, but there's one particular one which has now been decommissioned, and this is uh, one that has to, has to do with um, uh, online platform. There's, there's, there's an online plaf platform that has been running on the church, uh, church web, but you're being, you're being asked to, to ignore that um, as this has been decommissioned. But use Airtel money, uh, Zamtel money, and an MTN, and then there's also the actual church account at Standard Chartered Bank. Um, Sister Matilda Mwangala, who is a member of Sina Class 4, is still in hospital at Chilenje Level 1. Uh, we encourage to pay a visit and pray with her. On a sad note, um, the Mwingas have a funeral, uh, it would uh, Stanford Mwinga, the young brother to the late elder J.B. Mwinga. Uh, I'm sure many of us will be familiar with him. Died yesterday, and the funeral is at his, uh, his farm along Mumba Road. Uh, further details will be made available 
uh, regarding the funeral. This marks the end of the announcement. Please God bless you and have a wonderful Sabbath. Amen. Good morning, church. We'll begin our song service and uh, we'll sing hymn number 307. After uh, the, the hymn, then I'll ask uh, the expressions to, to give us a song. Uh, please prepare two, two songs. So, but first you sing one after the, the hymn. 307, I am coming to the cross.
Good morning, Sabbath School. Amen. I'm so happy to see you and I'm happy to see the smiles. They just give me that, that joy, the extra energy when I'm in front. So I welcome you all in a very, very special way and it's such a joy. It's such a joy to see everyone's smiling faces and to see a full church. We praise God for that. Uh, in a special way, we would like to welcome our visitors, those who are among us, and also our online viewers. We know you are there, and we are totally happy that you've chosen Lusaka Central Church as your worship platform this morning. In a special way, I'm asking all our visitors to please stand so that we can welcome you in a very, very special way. Visitors, including the singing group, please stand. What does the church say? Amen. 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 Uh, uh, is there anyone who's been away from church for some weeks, even for a long time, and you are here today? I can see Auntie Chanda. You can just step towards the door and wave at the church. We're all happy to see you. Is there anyone else? Auntie Chipimpi was so welcome. Is there anyone else? Please. Move inside, move inside so that the church can see you and give you a huge smile. Move in. There is room in front. So we, we, we actually welcome you in a very, very special way. In a special way, we're asking the church, those who are happy to have our visitors, to also show it that they are happy by standing up and giving a big amen for our visitors and smiling at them so that our visitors can really believe. What does the church say for our visitors? Amen. Amen. Visitors, I hope you feel welcome. Yes, we are so delighted to have you here and please feel at home. And to show you just how happy we are, we are going to sing a very beautiful song for you. And, and this song is going to be sung by the whole congregation. And you can also join in. This is 579, after which Brother Doubt is going to pray for us. Jesus 
Are we kneel down for the word of prayer? Shall we pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for the privilege of life you have given us this wonderful morning. Lord, we know that from the highest ranked angel to the smallest ant, we all depend our lives on you. Father, in you we live. In you we move. In you we have our being. Our lives are hidden in Christ with God. Lord, we thank you that you have given us access to the throne of grace because of your blood. And we are so sure and certain that as we worship you, our worship will be incense before you. Because we know, because of your blood, we have access. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony, Lord. Thank you, Father, this wonderful morning, Lord, as we worship you, we need your presence. You've seen people who are here. People have come with different issues. Lord, I pray that may you take all their issues away in the name of Jesus. Be the answer to their family. Be the answer to their situation. Whatever it is that they are going through, Father, come through in Jesus' name. Let the people go home knowing that I have seen God face to face and my life has been preserved. Father, as we start the program, may you be with us and be part of this program. We want to feel and hear the divine presence in this place. Thank you for you have answered our prayer. For we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Church, I'm going to ask you for a little assignment and I'm asking you to turn to the person who's sitting next to you, turn to them, and I only want you to ask them one question and then the rest of it is going to be sign language. So when someone asks you, how was your week? Just respond using sign language. So how are you going to do it? If your week was good, just do this. If your week was bad, give a bad expression, like give that expression. Then after that, uh, when everyone is done, then we're going to continue. So you can turn to your neighbor. You're not following the rules. Let's do it again. You're not following the rules. Let's do it again. So you're just asking. You're just asking them, how was your week? Then the rest is sign language. You're not saying anything. The rest has to be sign language. So ask them, how was your week? Then the sign language follows. Okay, thank you, thank you. So, let me ask something. Uh, how many people had people next to them who had a good week? Lovely, lovely, lovely. So, uh, those who had people next to them who had a good week, how many of you smiled when they told you they had a good week? How many of you smiled? Okay, those who had a good week, how many of the people next to you actually smiled when you told them you had a good week? Did the people actually smile? Okay, then how many of you uh, had people who had a bad week? Um, okay, so how many of you who had a bad week? Okay, how many of you who were told your friend had a bad week? Uh, held their hand or rubbed their hand or just gave an expression of sympathy. How many did that? 
Or how many of you were given that expression? May I see that? Thank you. So we can see that our hands are reducing. Today what we are looking at is modern day evangelism. And when we are talking about modern day evangelism, these days it's not like it was in my grandmother's time where someone would just go call a lot of people and start preaching to them, telling them the word of God. And maybe you won't even get to see that person again. These days, it's about one-to-one. -one. Our evangelism is the time we spend with the next person. That time is very, very critical. How we treat them, how we, how we feel about their burdens, how we feel about their successes and their joys, that is how we'll be able to show them Jesus, and that is how they'll be able to see Jesus in us. So as we worship today, I want us to think about this. In the song that we're singing, it was saying, it is love that makes us happy. Love is what makes everyone happy. Without love, we cannot be. And it's love that smooths the way. The song went on to say, this world is full of what? Sorrows. It's full of sorrows, of heartaches, and all these things that go wrong. But we depend upon the next person to hold our hand. Then we'll be able to see Jesus. If someone is burdened and we are not there to hold their hand, no matter what we say, we can fast the whole week. We can pray for two hours on end. But if we are not able to hold the next person's hand, to smile, they will not be able to see Jesus. So this is what we are looking at today. I'm with my brothers, my missionary brothers. I'm so happy that we are sharing the platform together. And this is what they're going to tell you about Brother Kefa Spiri. Good morning, church. Um, it's always a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Um, when we're singing our opening song, that song, every time I sing it, reminds me of nearly 10 years ago when my wife and I stood on this platform, and some of you witnessed uh, the wedding. That was our special opening song. So every time that song is sung, it takes me back. So it threw me off a little bit. Instead of uh, thinking about evangelism, I was thinking about my beautiful wife. Uh, but we counted all joy. Uh, I, was, I was also very happy to see um, from where I was seated, I think I saw Brother Vincent in the group. Um, it's good to see that those who have helped us come this far, he used to be one of my adventurer leaders back in the days. So it is warranted that he can now have gray hair. Uh, he should not feel very bad. Um, it's good to see every one of you here. And um, like Sister Bessa has mentioned, I would like to say that when we talk about modern day evangelism, please, I will not go into technical details, and there is nothing so special. It is just the thought and reminder that times are changing, and the gospel still needs to be preached. Um, I have not said the gospel needs to be changed. Times are changing, and the gospel still needs to be preached. Now I, I can, I'm almost getting the right to say when I was young. At one point we had a pastor, what we, they were calling the harvesting. We even had, uh, Sister Dina, we even had songs coined to that effect. Um, now, harvesting 90, wesu. De twende tukanjile mumiliango ili kuma ibili yavana. When that was sung, then we were very sure that Christ was coming in those days, and we went out to preach the gospel like our lives dependent upon it. But look, this is almost thirty years down the line and we're still waiting does it mean that the gospel 
has lost its power. I would like to, to advance to you, beloved, that we live in a time where conventional evangelism has become, I will not say difficult, but has evolved. I'm still using that term. Has evolved. Case in point, our local church here. Some of you, without zeal, without knowledge, or with a lot of misdirected zeal, may claim that the church is not doing crusades. I'm talking about our church here. But look at where we are. If, where would we put a crusade? Don't put pressure on pastor. We don't even have the space. Leave that alone. Look at the community around us. Won't we be deemed as being... That's the word I was trying to avoid. I don't know if it is a sanctified word to use. So, but then does it mean we will not go out there to preach? It then calls us to the fact that we need to come up with very innovative ways of taking the gospel out there. I'm a, I'm a member of a, of, a, of, a, of a group, it's an Adventist group for uh, business people and professionals. It's called Adventist Layman Services Industries. And one, their motto is taking Christ to the marketplace. The principle is that in the places where you are, in your schools, in your businesses, in your workplaces, there are people you interact with on a daily basis. Those are your first touch points. A research was done by an Adventist group. I was reading um, this report uh, just yesterday. It comes from the North American division, but I think it's very valid. And it, it says close to 79% of convents in the church came through because they were referred to Christ by a friend. Now, the issue is this. We have always talked about uh, friendship, evangelism, and everything else. Uh, Brother Michael, is it possible for us to scale scalability? Is it possible? And I argue to say it's very possible for us to scale up friendship evangelism in our modern day. Our church here, if I'm not mistaken, plus or minus 1,300 members that we boast of. Um, whether they are here or not is another issue. But if that 1,300 was to reach one person, that would be 2,600. What is the membership of the church in our conference, the membership of our church in the union, the membership of our church in the division at the general conference, if each one of these people reached just one person, my argument of scalability would be achieved. There's many other arguments that I have. In fact, I was doing something. Uh, I will not say it's a document, but I was just doing something which proves that if each one of us will just take time to reach one particular person. But then the issue is, how do we reach out to them? If you look at our modern day uh, lives, they are so busy. One of, the, one of the ways that you can reach out to people is to reach them at their points of need. I argue to say you cannot take a crusade to somebody who needs food. You can come and debate with me after this, this, this moment. This is not a Bible study, so you will not respond here. I have that, uh, that privilege. I argue to say in this day, when we're talking about drought, it is a moment for the church to reach out. The church has got, um, you know, ADRA. So the church is doing it at a corporate level. But at your own personal level, what are you doing? You are not using this as a bait for people to come to Christ. But you will take this alongside the message of Christ. When they have eaten, after some time, probably they may remember. If they don't, please just continue praying for them. I'm reminded of the Good Samaritan. When he found that person who was beaten, that person did not need food. That person did not need prayers. That person needed medical aid. I was talking to a friend during this week who is a medical doctor, and she mentioned to me that there are some people at her hospital, it's a government hospital, I'll not mention where, who give funds regularly. And these funds are meant to help patients who are not able to foot some of the bills. So what happens is somebody comes and says, no, I want to do a CT scan. And they will check to say this person is really vulnerable and they cannot afford. Because of these pools of funds, people are helped. Now that is relevance. Now can you imagine this person does a CT scan or whatever medical intervention, and after they are made whole, they are told, oh, actually this was paid for by someone. Who is that person? That person comes and speaks Christ. You say, no, don't worry, don't thank me. It is God who has given me this privilege and opportunity. 
That is how we are going to reach Christ in these modern days. I am not saying the traditional and conventional ways are not going to work. But let's look around us. Uh, let's look around us. Um, one of his favorite uh, quotes from the Spirit of Prophecy says, Christ's method alone. And Christ's method was to reach people. For those who were hungry, he fed them. For those who were sick, he healed them. Even those who were dead, he resurrected them. The biggest challenge that we have is that we are living lives where we are not even checking who our neighbors are. We are living lives, we are almost getting there. In that environment where you live for a long time, where people have to invite you to come to a funeral, we are also almost getting there. There was a funeral in our street, and uh, it's, un it's unknown for a Zambian funeral to have a closed gate. We didn't know about it, so I was asking my wife, to say, I was trying to drive in, and the, the, the gate was blocked. So we don't know what's happening. He said, no, actually, there's a funeral across the road. But the gate, but I'm like, but the gate is closed. And the Zambian way is the gate should be open. And everybody should say, like, no, probably they, they want their privacy. We are getting to that extent. We don't even know our next door neighbors. Um, as I close, I'd like to say, and um, um, Matthew 4 verse 23 was one of my key verses, which says, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Do you see that he did not just go about selling the books? Yes, it is good. But you go and sell a book to somebody who is sick. Help them get whole. Then preach Christ unto them. In fact, they will appreciate the message of Christ more when you have reached out at their points of need. Um, as I close, the, good, uh, the only visit that God can bless are the ones we make. The only literature God can bless is the literature we distribute. The only Bible studies God can bless are studies we give. The only acts of kindness God can bless are those we practice. So as we shall go out today, I pray that the Lord may help you open your eyes. It will be like you doing a, a basic, simple market research. Around you, what can I do? There's an old woman out there near your place who uh, she, she doesn't pay for refuse, so her bin is just thrown in the yard. 120 kwacha every month for bin collection, you would have reached out. There's a single mother out there who doesn't know when her car needs to be serviced. Um, reach out and help. Just once in a while. So some are smiling. But these are modern day issues. There's a, there's, a, there's a family somewhere who have to walk kilometers to take their child to school. The same direction you use when you're dropping off your children. Can't you offer to say, can I be dropping your child? This is how we are going to push the gospel in our days. I pray that the Lord may open your eyes, that you may see the opportunities around you for you to reach out many for Christ. Amen. Expressions, please give us a special song.
to serve the Lord. Technical. Want to serve the Lord. It's okay, technical, we'll sing an a cappella song. Please just reduce the volume there. Church. Oh, praise God. Um, the mission story is just coming from here, Bible school. That's where the mission story is going to come from. Um, I want to introduce two friends of mine. They are here. And when I introduce them, then I talk about my mission story. Uh, first of all, Mr. Richard, you can stand. And uh, my young brother, Frederick, start. Wow. And the mission story is just based on these two. I love them so much. You can take your seats. You know, I met these people on the same day, six years ago. In 2018, 2019. I was visiting a client at a certain uh, shop where um, I used to go, there was a client, a lady. So when I was there visiting a client, Mr. Richard came to buy something there. Then as I was talking to the person who was selling, he got interested, he was just listening, 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 and then he told me to say, but even me, I would love to do that. I said, yeah, it's okay. I gave him the VOP from New Apostolic. He started and it didn't take long, he graduated from here, and he got baptized from here. And from that day, he has never missed church six years ago. He has never missed church. He comes. Even when I was sick, he could call me, I have not been seen in your church, where are you? He could do that. But what is significant about these two is I met them on the very day, same day. This one, the mother introduced me to him. I went at 
uh, 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 their place. The boy was very young, he was just a pupil. And when the mother introduced me to him, he was not even interested. He was not interested. I could go there, he was not interested. Now, what happened was that that one got baptized. When I'm dealing with that one, for six years, it is now when he just said, I think I need to be baptized. He called me to say, I need to be baptized. Do you know one thing that I, the Lord told me? He said, evangelism and soul winning is not an event. It's not a one-day thing. Imagine if I gave up on him. Today is a student at Zika's. I met him when he was a pupil. Today is a student. And he comes and I want to be baptized. That one got the message. He got baptized and he has been coming. That one we are dealing, it's a what? It's a process. So when you reach out to someone, even when you go and give out the book, don't think when you just leave the book, that's the end. No. Keep on. Imagine six years. Today that's when he's making a decision of getting baptized. So if I gave up, I would have thought, ah, maybe he was not, he's just not caught. <laughs> he's just not caught. But himself, I didn't even tell him. He just came. I think I need to be baptized. I've heard. Last one. It's also coming from the, the, the same Bible school. Two weeks ago, I think three, two to three weeks ago, I was coming to church. Then I met this woman smiling at me. Ah, I could just see someone smiling in, in front of me. I said, what? I think she knows me. Now I'm trying to remember, where did I meet this person? My mind, gone. Then she approached me and said, how are you? How have you been? I've been looking for you. I said, my God. But I don't know her. Maybe I'm trying to remember. Then she reminded me. Then I remembered her. There was a time when we were going out as Sabbath school classes. Some, I think in some two to three years ago. So Elder Piri, uh, Pastor Piri went to uh, Madras area. Pastor Abraham Piri. They went to Madras area where they met a teacher from Lotus. They gave her VOP lessons, and Pastor Piri brought the name of that teacher, and he, called, he told me to say, you should call this person. So I called the woman, and we started chatting, and I started visiting that woman. Now, what happened was, after some times, I lost the phone. Someone got my phone, so I lost the contact of that, that woman. After some time, then I meet this person. Then I ask her, so where are you going? She's telling me to say, I'm going to church on Saturday. I said, ah, you've become that. Yes, at, when I lost your contact, I was trying to reach you, but I will, you were not reachable. Then someone whom I knew who goes to church at Burma, I said, no, I want to be baptized to be a Seventh-day Adventist. He took me to Burma church where I got baptized and I sing in choir now. Amen. Then I was like, oh. Then God told me to say, you know what? Evangelism and so winning is not one man's show. You can plant someone who harvest, someone who weed, another one who do what? Who harvest. So you, Pastor Piri found the woman, they gave you the thing, you started studying with her, you lost the contact. But the Burma church did what? Harvested. So evangelism is not one man's show. It is a coordinated uh, unity and uh, coordinated efforts. So when you give a book, it is, a sp it is God who, 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 who converts people. So when you do your part, don't think that's the end. Another person will pick it up from there because God will still lead a person because he wants to save that person. So just do your part. When God gives you a chance to do your part, do your what? Your part. God will, if, if your part is done in someone's life, God will take that person to another what? Another place, another person, another person, until the person reaches who? God. Amen? Amen? So God bless you. As we go out this afternoon, just know that this book that I'm going to give, it will be accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And God will do the way. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, my brothers. This afternoon, indeed, the church has been asked to go out there and distribute these books. Jesus left us his words in Luke 13, verse 35, and he says, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Just think about it for a moment. Imagine you are in a relationship. 
where no one gives. Everyone just looks at the other one. No one gives anything, no present, no smile, nothing. How would that relationship be? Jesus has loved us and he has given us a lot. And he's even given us the ability to walk. He's given us voices to speak. All he's asking us is, please be my tool. Go out there and give. As we are thinking about modern day evangelism, one of the best things that we can give, which we don't have right now, is time. And if we can just give our time, even two minutes, that is a lot for the kingdom of God. May God bless you. Expressions continue singing as we disperse. Jesus is the rock of my soul. Jesus is the rock of my soul. On Christ the solid rock. Jesus is the bread of life to me. Jesus is the rock of my soul. Jesus is the living bread of life to my soul. Oh, Christ, a solid rock, I feel. Jesus is the water of life. Jesus is the rock of my so I will never thirst, for I know He will supply all Christ, the solid rock I stand. Savior of my soul. Jesus is the rock of my soul. For he died on Calvary to save my soul. Shepherd is my shepherd. 
maybe just uh, before you start, maybe just a quick uh, announcement. Uh, you know that this afternoon we will be going out to distribute the Great Controversy book. And I think uh, as a class we have been asked to make those uh, 30 quarter contributions to be able to get a copy. I know that our class has about 28 members. We will do well to just try and maximize on the numbers so that we can get as many copies as we can uh, for this afternoon's distribution. I thought we make that uh, announcement so that people can prepare so that we exchange these 30 quarters for a copy each uh, in readiness for the afternoon. Thank you. Our secretary. Thank you. And, and there are those who got um, the book and the book the book and the book the in the darkness. Shall we pray? Our gracious Father in heaven, the hour has come for you, O oh Lord, to once again speak to us and enlighten our mind. As empty vessels, we are before you. May you fill us with your Holy Spirit and teach us that you would want us to learn and order our footsteps always to your own glory. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Light shines in the darkness. Oh. Can light and darkness cohabit? Ah, please. This is something we are used to. Eh? Okay, now, it's not that we should be keeping Bible aside. But let's practicalize it. Let's, let's share our experience. Can you have light and darkness in the same place? Okay. When darkness comes, which one gives way? The light gives way. When light comes, darkness gives way. And Christ gave us instruction in our memory text. He gives us instruction. John chapter 12, 35. It was a sort of divine advice, divine injunction. Walk now where there is what? Please. Let's respond. I, I, I think um, we remember the lesson more when we respond. You know, uh, those days uh, in, a, in, in, in a teaching school, they will tell you, 
what you hear, you are bound to do what? To forget. Eh? What you see, you may not what? Recognize. But what you do and say, you will do what? You remember. Eh? You remember. So, Christ in John 12:35. Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer, the light is with you. That is why I asked, I asked the question Can light and darkness dwell together? And the answer is what? No. A little while, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. Christ was referring to himself. He was referring to himself. In John chapter 8 verse 12, he tells us that he is the light. And he who walks in light will not do what? Will not stumble. He who walks in light will not stumble. Somewhere is John chapter 1, verse 14. He also tells us that he is the light of the world. So meaning that Christ was telling his listeners to do what? To walk in him. We will come what it means. We will come to what it means to walk in Christ, to walk in light, to walk in him. While he was still with them physically, and we know he's always with us. Emmanuel, right? God, he's always with us. Why there is light? And now, the question may be, in the light of this lesson, will there be a time when Christ will not be with us? Will there be a time when we'll be in darkness, where we will have no light? Keep that question in your mind. And now we go to the introduction. When you read Revelation, Revelation, Satan is depicted as what? The dragon. Right? Now, in Genesis, chapter 3, we are told that a serpent, the serpent did what? Communicated with the woman. And in the further study, we were, we, it was also revealed that this serpent was Satan. And then, you ask yourself, why is it that Satan was not de depicted as a cow in the scripture? Why fearful things? Why dragon? Why serpent? Why is it not like a dog or another pet you have in your home? Why first, why is Satan depicted as dragon? We studied the lesson. Okay? Yeah, because of his destructive abilities. Thank you. Stop, stop there. Remember what Christ said. The thief comes to do what? To steal, kill, and do what? Destroy. And devil's strategy to lure you away from God, to take your heart away from God, and then make you to be subservient to him and worship him, is through what? One of the strategies is through what? Destruction, violence. We can see that happening all over the world today. Within the week, we see what is happening in the Middle East. Okay. Now, that is on the one aspect. Why is he also depicted as a serpent? In, uh, in, no. in Genesis 3, we are told that the serpent was cunning more than any other, more than any other, Okay, so why is Satan depicted? Okay? Satan open deceit, but he will certainly deceive. Now, his ability 
to do what? To deceive. Now we have established two strategies. Satan used to do what? To take people away from God. One, through what? Violence. And then the other one, through what? Deceit. He will deceive you and then destroy you. He will first of all deceive you and then do what? Destroy you. And how does he deceive? Please, let's, let's, that, this is the lesson. How does he deceive? The light shines in the darkness. We are coming. How does Satan deceive? Oh, he, he comes to you and tells you, I am Satan, I am devil, right? So how? Okay. Yeah, so he mixes the right things and the wrong things so that you cannot see him. Bringing confusion. Mixing light. I think with Satan, light and darkness can actually do it together. <laughs> eh? Yes. So that you will be unable to establish that this is actually the light or darkness. Mixing error with what? With truth. Mixing error with truth. And that is how he comes. And, you know, those of us who are versed with history, we will see the account of violence, violence. Here are the countries we regard today as a beacon of a hope or peace. Eh? When you read the account, you see number as in innocent souls that we are wasted. Violence upon violence, like today, Switzerland is regarded as the most peaceful country. I don't know if how many of you know that. It's regarded as the most peaceful country. That is where, where you have your the Zurich, where they center the where, where your currency. Yeah, because they believe that here is peaceful. But if you read the account, what led to the Treaty of Westphalia of 1648, you have 38 consecutive wars. Some described it as religious war. Some described it as political war. We don't know. But all we know is when you read the account of Daniel, it had already been foretold that a time will come when the saints will be persecuted. And Satan adopted violent acts, killing people, maiming, both. We can also see that account in Acts of the Apostles, some of the accounts of the violent, violent act against the believers in Christ. Now, let me ask, did violence stop the propagation of the gospel? Eh? <laughs> Respond. Did violence stop? Okay, did killing of the disciples stop spreading the gospel? It didn't. Okay. Now, Satan observed that violence is no longer effective in stopping the spread of the gospel, he now did what? Adopted another word, for eh? Mixing truth with error. Don't be surprised that somebody you look up to as your pastor, as your elder, may be an agent of this. Is. And that is why Christ said, woe betide he who put his hope and trust in a man. So, Satan now used subtle way. Come as an agent of peace, as a preacher of the gospel. You know, Satan can actually preach, but he preaches to deceive. Remember, eh, he's cunning. So, now in um, 
early fourth century, something happened. Something happened. Constantine, we know, as an advent, the great, was converted. In fact, he was not only the one who was converted. Some political leaders were converted into the church. When they entered, of course, they didn't enter as children of God, as the uh, E.G. White. And moreover, this week's lesson, the one we are studying, is centered on chapter 3 of great, the Great Controversy. In fact, if you study chapter 3 of the Great Controversy, you don't even need to study this. It's centered there. So, in any part of the 14th century, many people were converted, political leaders, the hidden, and as they were entering the church, they entered the church with their idols. Eh? With their idols. And now began to establish some of the practices then in the church. And then they will, they will tell you, okay, no, we come for peace. Eh? You know, some the dominant, one of the dominant religions today will tell you we are religion of peace. But when you study, when you do a deep study about you, you will actually see that it's actually founded on violence. So you tell you, we are come for peace. Okay, the church leaders will do what? Give up some of the tenets of the Bible just to accommodate them. And that was how the teaching was compromised. Before you know it, the Lord of God was what? On attack. Moving from Saturday to Sunday, teaching of the immortality of the soul, and other um, erroneous teachings. We have them there. Because Satan knew he could not stop the spreading of the gospel through violence. He adopted the approach of corrupting the gospel. Mixing error with the truth so that at the end, his goal will be achieved. And you know we established he will first of all deceive you and then do what? Do what? Destroy. He deceives and destroys. <coughs> now, let us read them. The last paragraph, a quote from the great controversy. The, Great Controversy, page 51. It's quoted here. It said, Satan well knew that the Holy Scriptures would enable men to descend his deceptions and withstand his power. It was by the word that even the Savior of the world had resisted his attacks. At every assault, Christ presented the shield of eternal truth, saying, it is written. To every suggestion of the adversary, he opposed the wisdom and power of the world in order for Satan to maintain his sway over men and establish the authority of the Papa usurper, he must keep them in ignorance of the scriptures. The Bible would exalt God and place finite men in their true position. Therefore, its sacred truth must be concealed and suppressed. This logic was adopted by the Roman church. For hundreds of years, the circulation of the Bible was prohibited. The people were forbidden to read it or to have it in their houses, and unprincipled priests and prelates interpreted its teachings to sustain their pretensions. Thus, the Pope came to be almost universally acknowledged as the visagent, as the vicegerent of God on earth, endowed with authority over church and state. So, one of the methods is to keep you away from studying the word. That strategy he adopted then is still in practice today. Most times we are crowded with our daily activities. We don't even have time to study the scripture. So, one of the ways Satan wants us destroyed is by keeping us away from studying the scripture. Yeah. 
No, I was just going to say, as you mentioned, if you have been following the study of great controversy, uh, chapters 6 and 7, last week we are reading the separation of uh, Luther from Rome. You see the great price that uh, those people paid for the word of God. They were bent to the stake, and when uh, personally I had to reflect, I said, this was the cost for this word that I take so lightly. I have no time for it. May God help us to read the history of where we have come from with the word of God. And I think we will treat it differently once we have seen where we have come from. Thank you. Huss, Wycliffe, um, Jerome, and now soon Luther is going to be killed and then, because of upholding the word of God. May God help us to read and see the heritage that we have received from those reformers. And also chapter 4 that talks about the widens. Uh, chapter 4, yes, yes. So if you, please, as the book will be distributed today. Don't share what you don't even know. Don't be quick to share what you don't know. Study the Bible. Study the book. It's good to share. But what if question comes? Say, okay, please, what does this mean? I don't know. Don't be quick to share what you don't know. <laughs> May God help us. Now, savage works. I said something earlier that you shouldn't be surprised to realize that someone you look up to is agent of what? Is the wolves, savage wolves. It could be an elder, it could be your pastor. And Paul, in his time, warned us. So if we see it happening in the church today, we shouldn't be surprised. It had existed. That some, let's, let's read them um, out of the Apostle 30, 27 to 22. Please, let's quickly get that. Out of the Apostle, chapter 20, verse 27 to 32. Get the mic, I will. Twenty-seven. For I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, mm -hmm. savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. 30. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things, mm -hmm. to draw away the disciples after themselves. Thank you. Therefore, watch. Watch. And remember that for three years, I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Paul, he, in his own time, you can imagine, that compromise or misrepresentation of the gospel didn't start in our own time. It, it started even with the early church. He warned them that people should do what? Take heed. Take heed. Be careful. That savage wolves. Meanwhile, who are the savage wolves? The carriers of darkness. The carriers of darkness. We, 
where he was talking of enemy within the church within the church it's not outside anyone within the church that preaches anything that is against the gospel against the bible you may term that person as what savage wolves So let us not, in fact, let us adopt the word of Paul. And then he said we should do what? We should be what? Take heed. And then how do you discern, how do you discover any preaching, any teaching, any doctrine that is not in line with the gospel? If you don't, this, if you don't study the Bible. And that is why he said he commends you to the word of what? Grace. Which is able to do what? To sanctify you. So the only solution to being deceived and destroyed is through the study of the Bible. It is the, through the Bible that you will know that this one is a wrong doctrine. It is a wrong teaching. But if it's okay, you listen to me. I'm a human. I may say something that is not in line with the Bible and you go home with it. So it's left for you. After listening, you do what? Like the billions. You consult the scripture. You consult the scripture. As for false prophets, they will always be there. As for false teachers, they will always be there. As savage wolves, they will always be there. So you have to pay attention. They are within and not from without. And the greatest enemy is the enemy within. Is the enemy within. So the only antidote, the only assurance, the only protection is what? The word. And you know, just as we read in uh, E.G. White's quote, when Satan confronted Christ in the wilderness, despite the fact that he was God, he also challenged Satan with what? It is written. Now, if Christ could confront Satan with it is written, you, do you want to confront him with your own, with, no, your own physical strength? No, my pastor told me. My elder taught me. Have you verified? Comment. Um, that is the safeguard that uh, each one of us should have to quote the scripture and uh, <clears throat> not to be swayed. There, there, are, there are times actually today when the whole church can agree with the, with, with, with the water that flows when it, in actual fact it's error. And so until and unless we know where we stand and the only place where we stand is the Bible. That's why we, we have something like a safeguard. Like, like we have a gun, mm -hmm. once you put it on a safeguard, Safeguard, it can't shoot. And so, even now, when we have got a safeguard of a Bible, when we have got a, a safeguard of, a, of the Word, then we will we'll be able to stand firmly on the ground of Christ. Thank you. He has actually led us to Tuesday's lesson. Yeah. So, um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, when we talk about the the hooves, savage hooves. Remember, Jesus Christ pointed, um, um, talked about the hooves in sheep's clothing. But now Paul is talking about um, the enemies of the flock. Uh, these hooves, they, they don't just want to be among the, the sheep or the flock, but their aim is to destroy. Yeah, so... As we talk about uh, light learning through the darkness, we need also to know that the devil is using different strategies to attack God's people. When he saw that he lost on the side of a physical fight, what did he do? He had to come in with compromise. And now he plants his own people 
to make sure that the people are not grounded in the truth. So we really need to pay attention to these lessons because they really help us to have a clear direction which we are to take as we are engaged in this battle, the great controversy. Thank you. Yes. Thank yes. you. And um, another thing I want us to know is that it is actually easy for us to identify the savage wolves. There are characteristics given. It's a sign of what? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. Anyone that teaches you, oh, we live under grace. You don't need to keep the law. You are not under the law. Be careful with that person. Then another, another um, uh, um, marked characteristics of it is that he always wants attention, want people to respect him, to worship him. So we have to be what? very, very careful. Self-exaltation, self-glorification, these are characteristics of this savage wolf. Taking your attention away from God <coughs> and placing that attention on himself. So, and the only way, the only safeguard is what? Through study of the Bible. You know, I, I, I love them. Um, SDH 272. Eh? 272. Give me the Bible. Holy message what? Shiny. In the light. Eh? In whose light? In God's light. You shall do what? Guide my path. Eh? You know, the lesson also talks about the way that she made a right to a man. But the end thereof is what? Destruction. So we are walking on the path of Christ. And that is why Christ said in the memory text, you should walk while the light is what is with you. A time will come when you will be sick and your senses will not be able to walk, to function, to think that you have a God to worship. What are you doing now that you are healthy? You will not even have the strength or the moral power, the will to turn the pages of the Bible. Walk. Now you have what? The light. Now you are healthy. Now you can talk. Now you can reason. Now you can express your feeling. We have to do what? To walk. The walk, of course, you can also work and walk. Eh? Walking in the light. Being guided by the principle of God. Being led by the Holy Spirit in his own in God's um, path. And then, when you study the Bible, another thing, one thing uh, the Bible also does is enlightenment. It will enlighten your mind. If you listen carefully to the testimony of the preacher this morning, you can see the work of the Bible. In fact, if I stand here to give my own testimony, you also see. <laughs> eh? So, when you are enlightened, you will be able to discover that, ah, this teaching is error. This teaching is error. Now, there are uh, so many videos trended during COVID-19. During the period of COVID-19. Some they will now speak, yeah, that this is a cultured virus. It's a sign of the Antichrist as recorded in the Revelation. That the time will come when there will be pestilence. So they tagged COVID-19 as pestilence. Now at the end, eh, they will also point you to Rome, Roman practices, mixing error with truth. Yes, there is a prophecy that a time will come when there will be pestilence, when there will be this, but it's 
antichrist an institution or an individual? That one is a lesson for another day. So, the only way we can be safeguarded from error, the only way we can conquer Satan is through what? Through study of the Bible. And that he does not want us to be victorious. He does not want us to be victorious. That is why he will crowd your mind with so many things. It could be your children. You focus your attention on your children. It could be your job. It could be your husband. It could be your wife. Even things around us. Uh, the cause crisis here, you listing is the topic of the day. Israel invasion of um, Iran, Iran attacking Israel. Middle East. Meanwhile, you have your own attack within your mind. Have you paid attention? The only way is to study the Bible, and we already know that, of course, the Bible is what? Light. And we see how um, the psalmist extol the Bible, what the Bible does in the life of the believer. And when we study the work, um, other our parts and human reasoning apart from scripture, any reasoning that is not centered on the scripture is very, very dangerous, no matter how sound it might be. If we read um, Proverbs 16.25, it tells us that there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof this word is destruction. Any teaching, any practices that is not in line with thus says the Lord is actually dangerous. In fact, sometimes I, I regret dedicating so much time in studying all these human theories. Charles Darwin, all these Thomas Hobbes. And these are teachings that lead you away from the Bible. In fact, there is a book I have that I cherish so much. I don't know how many of you have um, read them. The Secret of the Ages by Robert Cullen. This man will make you, he will write and quote the Bible. But I then he will tell you that you can actually do something. You can actually dwell on your own strength outside God that you can muster the power of the mind to heal sickness you. They are suffering. Now, you will now ask, where is the place of God in your life? These are some two ways Satan does what? Takes you away from the truth. The way that submits a right to a man. I think we should comment here. What are some of the practices in our culture today that we think, ah, this is right. But when you weigh it, you just oppose it with the teachings of the scripture. Okay? Yeah, so I find this to be a call to reflection, especially for church leaders and those of us who have been in the church for a long time. There's a tendency to think that uh, we know enough and speak what we think is the right because we have said it before. Mm -hmm. And yet the truth is only spoken when you are inspired by the Holy Spirit and based on what the scripture says. Thank you. Thank you. And the center of this battle is your mind. My mind. Eh? Your mind, that is where the fight is. Sometimes you pick up the Bible, you want to study, you just drop it and then sleep off. Sometimes you are studying. The thought of your business will creep into your mind and then you do what? The understanding is distorted at that very moment. And that is why it's good for us whenever we want to study the Bible, we first of all pray that God should come, send his Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Reveal the truth, the way we ought to understand it. Our mind, our mind, our mind, no wonder the scripture instructs us that we should guard our hearts what, with all due diligence for therein lies the issue of life. 
So, as you stay, stay on your own, please consider what is actually going on in your mind at every moment. Are you reciting the scripture? One of um, our pastors, Pastor Randy Skid, somebody asked him a question. How do you memorize this scripture? Okay, so the summary of it all is for us to pay much attention, study the Bible, memorize it, keep it, keep the word in our hearts. At the end, we'll be victorious because the temptation will always come. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Ella, please pray for us. Give your mic to me. Shall we pray? Gracious Father, we are thankful that each moment you give us uh, insights uh, of what heaven would want us to do. And Lord, we depend upon uh, your guidance. How we pray that, Lord, you may give us a spirit and increasing our faith that, Lord, we may dwell in your light that each, each moment we may be people that uh, are relying on the scriptures. Uh, be with us now as we shall even separate from one another, but Lord, keep us throughout the week until when you bring us again on the Sabbath day. We pray and live all in Jesus' name, for sake alone. Amen. Amen. Hymn number 528. The Lord's our rock, a shelter. The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide a shelter in the time of storm.
There's too much noise in the house of the Lord. There's too much noise. The worship is about to begin, so let's maintain the silence. We are in the house of the Lord.
Set Sabbath day, day of sacred pleasure. It's God and ours will spend. And for him to Jesus, the children's dearest friend. Mm. We are ending. Uh, the officer is about to march in. pray. There was one that was willing to die in our stead and Jesus Christ nailed all our sins to the cross. Father we come to your presence this time and ask that in our deficiency your grace will be sufficient. That we that are weak today will be lifted before your presence dear Lord. We want to commit the service into your very hands that each and every person that has come today may find grace at the foot of the cross. Because, Lord, we know there is a quiet place of race near to your heart. And today we pray that God, like never before, be close to us, my Father. We come against the presence of the evil one in Christ's name. We pray the Lord, you speak to us, that at the end of the day, our song shall be, to God be the glory for great things is done. Bless us now, in Jesus' name. Amen. In opening our service, we'll sing him number three, 38, Loco, 38, Loco, Family Stand for God, 38, Loco.
reading uh, this morning is coming from Ezekiel chapter 8 and we are reading verse 9 and the Bible says and he said to me go in and see the wicked abominations which they are doing there may the congregation kneel as we pray Gracious and loving Father in heaven, this morning we gather in your sanctuary that you may speak to us as your children. You have been gracious to us. You have sustained us to this day. Let this day be a day of salvation. Let the Lord come into our hearts and let the Holy Spirit begin to reign. We want to pray, Heavenly Father, as you have appointed your man servant, Pastor Fune, as he stands to speak to the congregation, that you shall use him as an instrument in your hand. Not his will, but your will. For this we pray in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. us to read um, from the book of Proverbs chapter 3 uh, and read on verse 9 and 10. Uh, if you are there, we can read, go through the Bible together. Verse 9 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with uh, the first fruits of thine increase. Verse 10 So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy So brothers and sisters I want to believe that the Lord has been gracious to all of us <clears throat> to the extent that uh, we Have our jobs, we have our, um, you know we have had uh, drought this year, 
to the extent that most of the fields is actually the, the crops dried up. So I want to believe that there could be many of our, uh, of our friends who are here and maybe throughout the country that the Lord actually made it possible that they have something. Out of the many fields that dried up, God could have favored some of us present here. And all of us who are here, we are blessed in one or another. But we be that gracious enough to honor our God with all our substances, our first fruits. Um, so that we can prove God that he is a gracious God. That our pockets will never run dry. These two, they go together, brothers and sisters. The more you give, the more increase. If you withhold, there will be very little, if, if anything, none increase. So I want to take uh, youth, uh, I want to take through uh, this uh, process, brothers and sisters, that you, if you want, I want you to challenge God and see if what he is actually telling us in the book of uh, Proverbs is true. Take him at his word, and at the end of the day, you shall prove that uh, our God is right. And some of us who have, may have withheld that which belongs to the Lord, you can actually testify with me that uh, in that month that you have decided to do whatever you wanted to do, most of your things in the homes could have run out before the month ended. So please, let's take God at his words and we shall prove him right. And at this point in time, allow me to invite the deacons to wait upon us. Amen. records that have uh, blocked people, USD 881, 
A L and B A V nine nine six three. Please, you can uh, just move your vehicle so that the people you have blocked can can pass. Loving Father, we want to thank you for many blessings that you bestowed upon all of us. We ask that, dear God, the tithes and offerings that have been given and returned to you may go a long way, dear Heavenly Father, to minister to men. Loving Father, may you bless those that have managed to return, and those that have not managed loving Father, we ask that may you improve upon all of them that uh, the next uh, time, dear Heavenly Father, they will be in the position to return and give their offering unto you. We ask that when all is said and done, loving Father, only your name and your name alone shall be glorified. This we ask in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Children, 
apostol the story of Samuel. There was once a man named Elakin from the who lived in the town of Roman in the hill country the Ephraim, he was the son of Jerahim and grandson of Happy Sabbath Church. Uh, this is April Mohango. She's going to give us a story on Samuel. Uh, smile at her. Don't make her feel agitated. So, where are we starting? Okay, we we're supposed to start at the beginning of First Samuel, chapter one. This one, but it's not everything that we're going to tell you. So we'll ask you, we we'll request you to read first, cha first Samuel chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. There was once a man named Elakin from the terrible of Ephraim, who lived in the town of Roman, in the hill country of Ephraim, he was the son of Jeraham, and grandson of Elaka, and belonged to the family of Turu. Tohu, and part of his clan of Zupa, Elakin had two wives, Hannah and Penin. Hannah had children, but ha Penin had children, but Hannah had none. Okay. So we have said the first part of the story. There was Penina and Hannah. Hannah did not have any children, and Penina did have children. Penina was not so much of a good woman. She would mock Hannah since Hannah didn't have any child. So Hannah kept on praying. She kept on going to the, to the, to the, to the priest who was early. She would pray to her God to open up her, her womb so that she can have children. It was not easy. It was quite a long time. And this one day, she went praying, and she was just moving her lips. She was praying in her heart, but her lips were moving. And the priest thought she was, she was, she was crazy. She kept on praying to God. She kept on praying to God. The priest was busy looking at her. And when she was done, the priest, was, the priest asked her, what is wrong with you? And she said, there's nothing wrong with me. I was praying. So as she prayed, years later, she, her womb was opened and she had a child. She had promised God that this child that she's going to bear, she was going to dedicate that child to God. The Lord 
Lord has filled my heart with joy. How happy I am because of what he's done. I laughed at my immense enemies, enemies who joyful, how joyful I am because God has helped me. No one is holy like the Lord. There is none like him. No no protector like our God. Stop your loud, stop, stop your loud blasting sins. Your proud words for the Lord is a God is God's is a God who knows the and He judges all the people. Do the doors of strong soldiers are broken but the weak grow strong mm -hmm. the people who once were filled feed the people who now hire them out to get food mm -hmm. but the hungry are hungry no more the, 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 the children, the children the wife. wife has born seven children, but the mother of many is left, is left with none. The Lord kills the, restores and restores life. He sends people to the word of the dead and brings them back again. He makes some poor and others rich. Mm -hmm. the, he humbles some. humbles some and makes others great. Okay, so... What she was reading is what Hannah had to say after God opened her womb and she had a child. So this child that she did get it to God was um, little Samuel. When Samuel was born, she was dedicated to God and the priest Eli had to take the child in. Hannah would each time prepare a small robe for the little Samuel to go and preach the word of God. And uh, Eli had children that were wayward. These children, you will not be happy, even in our time as parents, we will not be happy about them. But little Samuel was a child that paid attention to what everything, paid attention to what God wanted him to do. So this one time, uh, little Samuel was sleeping and he heard somebody call him. He woke up and went to the master's, of, to the master's bedroom and uh, answered to him that I heard you call me. And the master said, no, it was not me. Go back to sleep. He went back to sleep. Again, he heard a voice call him. He stood up, went to the master's um, room, and he told, and, 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 and he told him, uh, you have called me. And the master said, no. Then the, the, the third time that he went there, he was told to answer uh, speak, Lord, for I am listening. And when that voice came, Samuel had to respond in that manner. Speak, Lord, for I am listening. And from there, God spoke to the child, and he became a, a soul that you could reckon with. So we thank you, and that's the end of our story. Thank you, Sister Muhango, for the children's story. Um, may I invite the choir to come up front to give us a special item of music. As I do a little bit of introductions, 
um, uh, the choir's name is uh, Expressions. Uh, expression comes from which church? Different. Oh, okay. So, um, Expressions will give us a special item of music. Um, the, the opening prayer was given by Eoda Mufukama Pomoro. Um, and I am Nalubamba, gift. Um, among men that God has raised today to speak to the children is Pastor Mufune. Pastor Mufune comes to us from Rwanda, Kigali. That's where he is ministering. And he came with his children. I hope they could be in our midst. Elijah, are you there? Kindly stand if you are in the congregation. Ah, there he is. Where are the others? Hallelujah, we praise God. Uh, we praise God. Uh, so, Pastor Mfune, soon after the special item of music, you will see him stand to speak to us. Expression. Yeah. 
is a sukamba for me. Prepare to leave at home. I will wait for the day to come when my tears are sukamba for me. What do we say to ex expression? Amen. They tried to express themselves. You know, Christian lives, you have to express yourself, isn't it? Yeah, because there are times when somebody, have you ever met people who tell you, express yourself, express yourself. So it's always important, even in church, we do that. The Lord is good. And all the time. Wow, wow. Now before we can talk of what we want to say, my time is saying, 11.50 and I'm told that Lusaka Central people sleep at 12 hours but during the week they eat at 12 so I don't know I have 10 minutes to preach so with your indulgency what do you agree so my elder told me as the spirit leads but I told him the spirit has been leading since eternity past so if we yeah, but we'll try to go within our time and to ensure that you are blessed. Amen. Amen. The Lord is good. All and all the time. All right. Um, thank you, Elder, for the introduction. And I think I'll just do a show again. I think you've seen my kids there. I've, um, I call them the Hebrew boys. I have four Hebrew boys and one Shunammite girl. Yes, so they are here. Uh, on a sad moment, I say it's sad, but I have to tell you this because it's important. Maybe some people ask me, we had a tragedy. We lost the shepherdess in February. Yeah, but uh, the Lord has been faithful to us. So I think after the tragedy, this is the first church like I'm preaching. Um, I thought I would not manage to preach afterwards, but I think the Lord has been gracious. He tells me, no, um, you have to do it because at the end of the day, when the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ will rise. And not only that, um, you know, the enemy will come during those times and interpret the scripture in his own way. Some people get angry with God and say this, but there's no time for that. Because we know each one of us has our time. Just like we were born on this day, there's a day that we die. So keep on praying for us. The Lord has been gracious to us so far, so good. And we hold to him and we pray that that day when the clouds uh, will open and the dead in Christ will rise and everyone then we'll meet our beloved, uh, my beloved wife and the mother. And this is our hope, and uh, we have to preach until the very end because that's a trust that we have in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. So I'm happy to be at Lusaka Central. I used to come here way back. I've been out, I think, for the last 14 years or so. But I remember the faces of Katongo, Daniel, Mike, who I think used to be at Impact. Uh, Edama Soche is there. We used to be together in Livala. Now he has moved to Central. I don't know what he saw in Central, but it's good to be on a Central place. <laughs> yeah, I've seen my good friend Abraham Piri around as well, and I think many others. And it it's, it's, has been wonderful to be around. But I'm told the Central is an international church. We might find the Kenyans around here. Are they there? Because we lived there for 12 years. Yeah, so Kenyans are Barienu. Mukosalama. They are not there, that means. <laughs> All right, so we are grateful to God and um, for this farm that he has brought us as we go. Today I'm told it's um, great controversy distribution. The great controversy, some they call it the great what? The great hope. Yeah, so in the afternoon I think that program will be there. And uh, people must be around. You know, when you're out of the country, most of the time you sing songs only in English. So I said, no, when I go to preach now, it will be local. Just enjoy the local. 
it's good, you know. Um, do you have any chorister? It's not just to, but do you have any chorister who can do this? Just one line of that song in Tonga. 38. You have uh, modernized yourselves. Huh? Ah, to him. Yes, come, come. Thank you, thank you. Just the first stanza in Tonga. Then we can preach this gospel. Yes. I want to make the Tonga, my Tonga people happy. Because my wife shows Tonga, so these are my in-laws. 38. Adu yu me muzila ya mwami na gubama penzi ya tupeha ibwe lili ya panguzo abumi mungiga yena kwa fwe Amen. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we want to thank God for um, what was the name of the little girl that gave us a story? April, thank you. She has a very good accent. And she's cute too. That's it. Yeah, so we encourage her. We thank God for you and we bless his name. Amen. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 9 and you stand as we read God's word. We can all rise up as we read God's word. Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 9. If you are there, say amen. amen. If you are not there, say please wait for me. One second, we are waiting for you. Now this is the word of the Lord that came to him and he told him to go in and see the wicked abominations that they do here. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. Let's pray. Father, we pray now. May your spirit speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. You can sit. So God tells Ezekiel to go in and to see for himself the wicked abominations that they do in that place. Allow me to speak on a subject entitled, Have You Seen Insight? You know, there are times you, I think we all know, there are times you get into a place, then you're walking around, it's a new building, it's a, it's a latest thing in town, then someone asks you, man, things happen there, this happens there, there's this and this, then the question will be, have you seen inside? It says, no dear, that man, you need to take time. So sometimes what people ask us to see may be negative or positive. Sometimes it may be something that improves our lives. Sometimes it may be something that brings value. Sometimes there are issues that even deteriorate every situation in our lives. But this time around when God is bringing this man in the fifth year, as he brings him, scholars will tell you this was around, around 599, 532 BC when this was happening. It's taken in the spirit. In the times of the captivity of Israel, this man, God takes him and says, I want you to see the abominations, the wickedness. I want to imagine that if he was a priest, of course, the elders in captivity come around him and then they want to hear from him, what is the Lord that's speaking through this man and this man says look the lord lifts me in the spirit and he tells me see get inside you see the wickedness and abominations done in this place when you go to verse 10 the bible says then when he went in and looked and saw every form of creeping animals 
That was an abominable to God. And it says all the idols of the house of Israel were portrayed around the walls. So when he sees and he sees all this, he knows this is not something God. There are times, friends, when God takes you on a mission and he wants you to do something. It might, the sight might not be pleasant, but God is telling you, this is the case I'm handling. This is the situation. And when I bring judgment, then no one blames me. Then no one says, God is not good because these are the things that are happening. Have you seen inside? I want to imagine this man says, yes, I've seen God, and the sight is not pleasing. I know there are young people who want to marry very soon. And many times when we see from the outside, the question I want to ask you, have you seen from inside? Because you see the beauty. You know that beautiful young girls, man. They have a good body morphology. Shaped like a Coca-Cola bottle. You look, they look good. You look at them, you say, man, I bless the name of the Lord. You know, they are so, even the way they speak, you just want to listen to them. But it's not from the out. Have you seen inside? And many times, after some times when we bring them, then we start saying, no, I made a mistake. There was a time in Kenya, somebody told me that many girls, you know, they buy um, chicken feed. You know chicken feed? Then they mix with some porridge. Because somebody told them a theory that if you do that, then your hips grow big. So, but don't, 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 don't do that. Please, I plead with you. I'm not giving you any methodology. No, 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 no. You know, so why? Because they want that. So not everyone who keeps chicken, not everyone who, who buys chicken feed as chickens. So I'm a chicken themselves. Have you seen inside? That's what he was being asked. Beloved friends, as we distribute the great controversy today, the question, have we seen inside that book? It's a book that speaks to us of the coming of the Lord. The book that tells us the abominations that happen in this world. The book that reveals to us the evils and the wickedness of the evil one. But the sad reality is many of us have not seen inside. That's the reason we live the way we live. That's the reason we talk the way we talk. That's the reason we are at ease in Zion. That's the reason we are so comfortable in our Christian lives. When Ezekiel heard these things, he was troubled, man. Because as if this is not enough, he takes him down the lane in verse 14. And the Bible says he brought him to the door of the temple. Which was of the gate of the house of Yahweh towards the north. And he says he saw women what they were doing. They sat and weeping for who? Tammuz. And he was shocked because this northern part, this is where animals would come when they're being taken for sacrifice. To the braze, of course. But he's shocked that women are seated there weeping for Tammuz. We all know Tammuz. He was um, a metropolitan. Uh, um, 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 Fertility God, that many would want to go to, that many, so they, they, they had a 40 days of mourning or weeping for him. He's shocked, sacrifice must come, but another God has taken the place of God. As if this was not enough, he takes him down the lane. Verse 16, he says, look, and again he says, he brought me into the inner court. And when he was brought into the inner court of the house, of the door of the house of Yahweh, he says, between the porch and the altar, there I behold the 25 men. These men were having their backs towards the temple and their faces towards the east, worshipping the sun in the east. Very disturbing. You know, sorry, let's imagine you come to Central Church. You come and you find some guys are selling June Town this corner. I mean, just imagine, we enter in our mental imagination. You get there, some have marijuana. On the corner, there's prostitution. You come there, people are betting. I said, this is what is happening. This is what is happening. It was a very sad situation. Beloved friends, I want to say this this morning. God is saying, have you seen insights? Because of time, we could have gone really dive deep into this. But I want to say this, beloved friends. There are object lessons we can learn from here. That the abominations in Israel, they have found us today here. The wickedness in Israel, we live with it today here. The sad reality is nobody wants to talk about them. That's why in church today, when a youth impregnates quickly, there's a church board and a business meeting, and the name must go. When the elder does that, no, we need to discuss administratively. 
There is no administrative sin. Sin is sin, beloved friends. We will not massage issues in this church. No one is an elder brother of Jesus Christ. We are on the level, same level at the foot of the cross. But this is the situation we have come today. Where we will believe this thing. And, and you see, when people know these things are happening, they'll be saying, oh, you see that church, but have you seen inside? Do you know the things that happen within, inside there? This is where I've come. My brother, are you faithful to your wife today? Many men today, they cannot leave their phones home because they know what is inside. Imagine you, you live in Hoodlands, then you discover you reach uh, Carroll Road, your phone has remained home. I don't know what kind of ang angle you get or boat to take you home because there's no helicopter plane you use. But I know you drive your car with craziness. The speed limits, everything you say today when you get it happen. Because now, things you know, they're tough. And you find your phone has no password. You reach home, she's holding it in the hands. You know that I'm a dead mate. Because most of us, we know what is in our phones. We are unfaithful. There are women that we go out with, yet we, we believe and trust in God. There are relationships in church today, whether of elders, whether of young people. And we know we're married men. No, and people say they'll tell you that Lusaka is for business, you know. So there are things you need to do. Things. The other thing you find even the dressing is very much exposed because they say, you see, if you make fritters, you don't cover them in a box. That is not sin. It must be transparent so that they see the fritters. Eh? Vitumbua. Now, this is the, time, the generation that we have today. That's how we see old. Today we're dressed well, man. That's why they say God must not come on Tuesday. Let him come on a Sabbath, because if he comes on Tuesday when he's, oh my God. That's where the issue is, friends. But this is the generation that we are in today, friends. It's tough. Women are crying in their homes today. Don't look at these women, they say, happy Sabbath. What are... That smile is plastic. You don't know what eats them within. When they go home, they say, you know, you say, this one is our leader, and this one is good. They say, how, we, how I wish you knew you guys. What I'm going through. You don't know what is inside there. You have not seen what is inside. There are women who do the same as well. And friends, these things are with us today. And let me tell you, my friend, you can do it today and you think God does not know. But God sees everywhere. You can go in a hideout, in a lodge and do the things. God is. But one thing I love, Elder Pumula, is that God loves us. He loves us so much. Do you know God protects you even you from doing something wicked? You are from seeing another woman. He even takes you home. Thieves are coming this way. He tells them, go and steal the other side because my son is coming this way. He takes you. Young people, do you know that God loves you? When you go and do your things, you lie on the grass, the snake could have done justice. But he tells the snake, go the other way. My daughter, she's still my daughter. This is how much God loves us, beloved friends. We can hide all these things, but we can't hide them from Jesus Christ. These abominable things are there. And sometimes we don't want to talk about them. Why? Because people feel when you talk about them, they'll hurt you. There are churches that are here, when you talk about them, they'll start saying, Ah, our pastor Mutichinje, Swadi Bueno. And why? Because also you want to live comfortably. You know, the church is treating you good, so you don't want to talk about them. It's not about that, beloved friends. If we begin to realize this message and what God is speaking to this church, God has a special message for this church. He has invested in this church, beloved friends. Just like Israel of old, they were God's agency for redemption. We too are Israel of today. God has chosen us, beloved friends. Jehovah's Witness, they have the legs. You know, I, was, I used to be in Jehovah's Witness. They have the legs because they move to every house. Catholics have the hands because they give. Some of you are beneficiaries, of course. Pentecostal, they have the voice because when they shout, even when they are five, you think they're hundred in a room. Baptists are great preachers because they preach. That's why even homiletics, Robinson, from Baptist. Adventists have the knowledge, the heads. No legs, no hands. That's why we fight a lot. Because heads are rolling. Boom, boom. No, we don't move. Even today when we say we go, some people start hearing them. No, pastor, I have BP, you know, my legs. 
But when kitchen pattern, when it comes, the legs are good. This is, friends, our situation where we are. That's what one person said. We have become like an NGO. NGO, nothing going on. <laughs> we are just there. We worship and we go. We, our churches have become like social clubs. When we return tithes and offerings like membership fee. That's it. And Ezekiel said, have you seen inside? Say, this is what I'm saying. See, yes, these things are happening. Today when you look at how we return our tithes, very down, very down. But betting, we are faithful in betting. Some of you, as I'm speaking, you're busy on your phone, seeing the matches. This one, I'm betting for this one. I mean, this one will beat this one. Man, you will beat this one. This one. But return faithful tithe and offering, nothing. Young people, they tell you time and again, marry in the church. No, 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 no. There are good people outside there. Some people would say, no, I will talk to him. I will give him the great controversy. He will read. He will change. Let me tell you, my friends, there is nothing like romantic evangelism. <clears throat> you can't drink waters when they're hot. No. Jesus didn't say marry them. He said preach to them. But some of you are in that business, and I can see suspects. I see them sometimes. By them. I said you are in that business. That mission might not be successful, my sister, brother. Because that is not God's way. God has a pattern and nobody can change it. He cannot change it. He says, have you seen the abomination? Now, when he was brought into the, the inner court, he says, between the porch, he saw 25 men. If you read Joel chapter 2, because of time, you'll be, you'll be have the time to go through. If you read Joel chapter 2 verse 17, Joel was saying, let the priest, Yahweh's minister, weep between the porch and the altar and cry to God that spare your people. This was a place where the priest must weep. But now, at the place where they must weep and minister, 25 men have taken preeminence of that place. And they are worshipping the sun. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 19, God told them, you shall not worship, you, you shall not look to the skies and worship the moon, the sun, these things and save them. God says no, but this is what they are doing. These men, they are doing that. There were 25 of them. Beloved friends, I want to ask you a question today. What kind of a man are you? Are you a man who is faithful? Have you ever reached a point whereby you are so faithful until your wife tells you, honey, do you know you remind me of Jesus Christ? <laughs> Just looking at you. I'm serious, I'm telling you. It's okay, baby, I'm trying. I'm trying. But that one is, hey, it's important. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we, we need to reach that point because the Bible says, for me to live is Christ. When I die is gain. No longer I that liveth, but Christ lives in me. When he lives in you, even in your house, they must see him. Don't be men who come to the house every time. The moment you park outside, kids are scampering in their bedrooms. They leave you with your wife. And they've given you names. Zama, Saddam, Hitler, Solim. You don't know in your house because some of us, we feel when I'm so tough, I'm managing my house. But you're losing your house. You must be friends of your children. Be friends. They must be happy to be with you. They must say, Daddy, they must talk to you and ask you questions and issues. But most of us men, we are not friends. That's a reason, let me tell you one thing, that they are closer to their mama. Because mama, she's friendly. She embraces them. She tolerates, but again, she disciplines them. You, you have no space for friendship. You have no space. And believe me, you friends, you lose your children. By the time, you know, some people think, oh, no, by the time he reaches 18, 19, I think I'll get there. No, 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 no. They can't allow you in their space. You are an intruder. But we are those men that are there. But when we come to church, we talk of love, we preach, we say this and that. But those are things that are not there. God is saying, look, these men, we are worshiping the sun. They were worshiping nature. What are we worshiping today, friends? The Bible tells me the love of man is a root of what? And some, because of this, have departed from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Men of us have loved money. Right now, as I'm preaching, you're thinking of your contracts, your supplies. After this, you go to meet somebody because there's a tender. You're worshiping nature, my friend, now. And that's the direction many of us are going. We are failing to keep this Sabbath, friends. We keep it by looking at the sun as it's set already. No, no, it's still there. So you want to sin after it has set. Nature is what we follow. 
I'm sorry to say that we as Seventh-day Adventists, the Sabbath has become a burden to us. If God announces and brings another version and says, no, we have changed it to Monday, the people to celebrate it will be us. Because we feel it's a burden. We can't have a good time. We cannot be on TikTok so much. We cannot be on phones so much. You know, we are restricted right now. It's like in a cell, confined. But when you get in the house of the Lord, the Bible tells me where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You must be happy to be in the house of the Lord. You must feel good to be in the house of the Lord. But as men, no. Somebody told me a story. A certain pastor who was, um, do you have a WhatsApp group in the church? So he was talking to the church WhatsApp group. But unfortunately, at the same time, he was talking to the girlfriend. So he's, talk, he's posting there, posting there. I don't know the demon that entered in him. He removed all his clothes and got a photo of himself. And he thought he had sent to the girlfriend. It went to the church group. And you know, church group members, when they see something that looks suspicious, they download quickly. <laughs> so he, 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 he didn't know. They, down, they were even commenting, look, it's shameful. Look at the ministers of today. Oh, this, oh, me, I'm leaving the church. Oh, you know, women, they'll talk. Then he says, honey, I've sent you something. I don't know, Sina. No, no, you check. No, no. By the time he realized it, it has gone to the church WhatsApp group. The unfortunate thing, he committed suicide. Because there's no way he would explain to the churchmen. How do you tell them? That I was trying to bring my body to see how anointed it is. No, no. <laughs> you wouldn't. There was no space or room for that. You know, so these are situations, friends, we are in today. Very difficult, very tough. But as a church, we must know that God is saying, any kind of wickedness, I don't want it. That's why we say in the church, there must not be tribalism. Because this church does not belong to anyone, but to Jesus Christ. People have come and gone, Christ is still the same. Don't say it started from Lusangu. No, it started with Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter where you come from. You are a child of God. And God wants you to enter through the peri gates. Even when you do those things I've talked about, I have good news to tell you. The grace is sufficient. That's why we say in your deficiency, may it be sufficient. God is willing to save you. The biggest challenge, friends, is our hearts are hardened. You know the great China war? When they built it, they were happy to say nobody attacks us. They were very comfortable in that hole. They knew that everything shall be well. But do you know what happened? That's a time they were attacked the more. They never asked the question, what happened? They never even climbed or break in. One answered them and said, you built the war, but you never built the war in the minds of the soldiers. It's not about what you've done. You have a good bank account. You have all these things and everything. Friends, we talk of your minds. That's why Paul says in Romans 12, he says, but I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Then he says, but be he transformed by the renewing of your what? Inside. Inside, friends. Our mind must be renewed. My dear brother, we don't know what is inside you. Some of us have been harboring grudges for a long time. There are people who don't talk to each other in the church. And they will even tell you that, let's see, if that one is in heaven, pastor, then heaven let it be. They are vowed. They are vowed. They don't. People have talked to them, they don't care. Let me tell you, my sister, if you are there, that's a demon. My brother, if you are there, that's the devil himself. Because the Bible tells me God is love. He that knoweth God loves. We must love one another, regardless of status or anything. God, we, we must love each other as brothers. But hatred has come in. The Bible tells me they were also weeping for Tammuz. Women, why not men? Have you discovered that these other churches, women are the majority? And they are going to tell you to say, you see, my sister. Now, uh, let me change to be a prophet. I want to prophesy. You see, my sister, the one doing that is your neighbor. Say that you leave that residential place or you continue. They are tying your destiny. Then he said, the man of God, I believe so. Because I see the way they look at me. We live and live in God's. Oh, our, there are men of, let me tell you, the devil has no power to tie your destiny. You people have read, but most of you are running there. All oh, wizards have tied my destiny. All oh, tied all of us in our family that will never get married. So we are going for cleansing. Which cleansing when Christ cleanses us on Calvary? 
Which one, my friends? But most of us, we are getting there. A lot of women are getting there. I hear on radios, they are calling this, what is happening. I say, you come, we are going to help you. And do you know, I'm sorry to say this, that the gospel is bringing division in families. Because they will tell you that the one who is telling your destiny is your uncle. Will you ever talk to your uncle? Will you ever visit him? And some of you already are suspects of those things. There are people you don't talk to based on that because it says, the man of God told me. Which man of God? Read the Bible. Read, get controversy, and you see what is inside. The biggest problem, friends, we don't read. We have become like a school that has finished syllabus. We don't even know what to do next. Because we have done everything. We have done prophecy, health. All these things we know as a church. Now we sit it because we don't know what next. Let me tell you what next. Revise. Because he's coming again. Keep on revising. My Christ is coming. No one should discourage you. I'm sorry to say this because there are some times I was in one church and one preacher. You know, sometimes even us as preachers, we make mistakes. If there are things you don't do, don't now water them down. No, there are people who are vegetarians. They think, what? You know, these things are even bitter. Salvation must not be bitter. Let me tell you, my friend. If you go to UTH, then you stop saying those things. There are people who are dying because of these lifestyle diseases. Many of them. So if you don't have to, anything to say, keep quiet. Because this message God gave us. God gave us a health message. God gave us everything. If you're not getting there, I'm not saying I'm getting there. I'm also trying and struggling. But I will not water down that which God has proposed. No. I will not try to be so that I can have followers and everything. No, no, no. The message must stand as a message. As I said, have you seen the wickedness? These women were weeping for Tammuz. The God of fertility. I don't know whom you weep to, beloved friends. But go in some houses, you find under the bed there's 2.5 of water. At holy water. Sprinkle. Ati mutina kufovara vao. Ya jamans ya You people. <laughs> you know, sometimes we're educated, but I don't know why people come and just make us to look so naive. I don't know. Because we have the truth. And as I'm saying today, if you are Seventh-day Adventist, you have been in this church long, it's time to return to the ancient roads. And ask a question, where is that Lord that leads to God? When we find it, the Bible says, our souls will find rest. We need to get there as a church, beloved friends. We have no time to waste, even as I bring to this a close. We have no time to waste because Colossians chapter 2 verse 7 it tells me, you must be rooted, built up in him, established in the Lord Jesus, in your faith, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Are you rooted in Jesus Christ? Are you faithful in Jesus Christ? Beloved friends, pianists, let's finish this sermon together because we want to go now. Let's finish this sermon together. Friends, are we faithful to God? When you look at your Christian life, forget about how smart you come to Central Church. God is saying, have you seen insight? You talk so good, but look, pride is with you. And pride is a spiritual cancer. It will break you and finish you. Have you seen inside, beloved friends? Have you seen inside that house? Have you seen inside that life that is there? Friends, when we get there, the Bible tells me, then I saw thrones. Books were open and another book was open. The great, the small, and all the elite stood before God. They were to be judged according to what is written in those books. Judgment is coming, Adventists. God is counting on us to tell this world and help them to wake up. Where are those days when we talked about the sanctuary? Where are the days when we preached about the second coming of Jesus? Friends, we have talked of revival enough. God is saying, stand, go now. Tell them I'm soon to come. Prepare this world. God is saying, where are the men and women that will prepare the world for the second coming? God has entrusted us, friends, as a church. He says, look the abomination. Look what is happening inside. Look what is happening inside. You are here, my sister, but a married man is paying for you rent. God is saying, you don't know. Look what is happening. You are here, my sister, but your boss, there is a relationship. My brother, you are here, but look at the corrupt means you have. My sister, you are here, but look. You're... When was the last time you read your scripture? When was the last time you lived a devoted life? Beloved friends, the question is this now. 
How then do we run away from these abominable things? I want to give you five P's as I close. Number one P, we must learn to pray. We don't pray, but many of us, we do popcorn prayers. Prayers that you feel because you are scared I might be involved in a road accident. Let me pray because I'm going for work because my children. God is saying it's time to pray. Men that will kneel down. Men that will talk to God. Men that have a relationship with him. Pray. And let me say this, beloved friends. When you pray, you begin to understand life. When you pray, you will not want an easy life. Some writer wrote and said, don't pray for an easy life, but pray for strength to face a difficult life. Things will never be easy. Mm -mm. As long as you belong to this church, things will never be easy. Why? Because the devil knows you have the truth. If you hold it, he impresses. You live by, he'll bring many calamities. But let me tell you, friends, we must remain faithful. To that very end, no matter what happens, no matter what comes away, death will strike, situations will come. But friends, there is a day that is coming. When he comes, we must be there. Therefore, central, I say, it's time to pray. If the prayer band was not there, it's time to pray. If you stop praying, my sister, it's time to pray. Talk to God. God will give you strength to live a faithful life. P number two, have the patience. Many of us don't have patience. We don't have it. You are still growing, but you want to grow yourself. You are still improving, but you want to change your skin color. They used to call them the FBI's former black individuals they don't have the patience have the patience of Christ patience is not the ability to wait only but how you act while you are waiting that is patience do you complain what is it while we are waiting for Jesus while we are standing firm how is our patience are we complaining are we out of the way some have left the way because they have lost the patience you need to have the patience of the Lord the Bible tells me he will do all things beautiful in his time not your time but God's time because God is working on you God wants to do something that at the end of the day when he completes finishes then he can pronounce well done good and faithful servant Number three, P, process. Life is a process. Imagine a child born today. They tell you, Mommy, Nifun and Sima, what did you think? You run away from that child because you expect the process. They must be on milk from porridge, crow, walk. It's a process. But most of us want shortcut things. Shortcuts have put us into problems. You want to buy an iPhone, you don't even manage talk time. Shortcuts. You want us to show off, this is what I have. You are at Nafika. You have not reached, we will reach when we get to heaven, my friends. I will not reach in this world until I get there. At Nafika, man, we are living well. Our levels have changed. No, my levels only change when Jesus changes them. Nothing else. But most of us, that's what, we have left the process. Don't miss the process. Don't become pregnant. Don't miss the process. Don't go on the back door because you want a job follow God's process no shortcuts number four purpose God wants every Christian to live a purpose driven life in every day of your life you must live for a purpose don't just live like a vagabond don't just live without sight without direction you must have a purpose if you get to the bank the bank has business hours they will tell you we open from eight to four what about you how is the schedule you ask them at Asini no have a purpose, my friend. They must, and in your purpose, in your program, God must be priority. He must be there. That's why I love my friends the Muslim because they're living a purpose life. They have God in their schedule. They have him. You go to an Islamic shop, it's time to pray. It tells you, you know, 20,000 at if you want to go to another shop. But us, at because we want money. We have lost the purpose, friends. We were created to be a royal nation. A priesthood of Jesus Christ. An example to society. The last P, product. When everything is done, my brother, God wants a product out of your life. When everything is done, my sister, there is a product God wants to do. That's why one singer wrote and said, God is working on me. He must work on you every day. Not only work on you on a Sabbath. Let him work on you on a Monday, on a Sunday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday. Let him, God, continue working on you. Don't be a seventh day, but a seventh day Christian. 
every day you live for Jesus Christ, beloved friend. Oh, this day as we close, beloved friend, and we have discovered what is inside and what God wants us to do as we go to distribute, beloved friend. There might be somebody in this church who is saying, Pastor, I backslided. What is inside, many know, don't know, but I know myself. There might be somebody who is saying, I need a paradigm shift. I need a change. I need to come to him. I need to be baptized. I want to say, beloved friends, there is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from the veins of Emmanuel, that when you plunge beneath that flood, you lose all the guilty state. Beloved friends, Christian life is not like when we stand up and we stand on an elevator at the airport. It takes you up. No, we need to be climbing every day, one step at a time by the strength of Jesus. That's where the writer says, Lord, help me to live one day at a time. Don't count on a past glory. That does not equate, beloved friend. What is the present life that you're living? Are you living for Jesus Christ? What is it that is happening in your life? You yourself, you know you're backslidden. You yourself, you, you know your secret life. God is saying today, bring it at the cross. Here is a cross in Central Church today. Here is a cross on the 20th of this month. He says, I have come. That those that Ezekiel saw, they may come to the altar. He is ready to forgive, beloved friends. He is ready to cleanse us from unrighteousness. My God is faithful. It doesn't matter, my sister, what people say about you. There is a God who loves you. It doesn't matter the hope that you have lost. You can rekindle it in Jesus again. Look at how things have been in your life today. When you go through the pages of your life, one by one, when you sit down and reality dawns on you, what is it when no member of Central Church is not there? What comes into your mind? God is saying, quit living a life of unfaithfulness. Come to Jesus. Don't be happy that I come to church. I wear suits. Remember, I've been drunk as they wear suits. Come. My sister, you are beautiful. Yes, but you need salvation. People have said you have many followers, but follow Jesus Christ. Many likes you have them, but let Jesus like you because of your doing. This is life, beloved. Don't spend. People are spending the whole day TikTok, Facebook, four hours on the phone. You will never read your Bible. Allow me to say this story as I close so that I make an appeal. A woman was seeing the videos. Then he asked the son to bring water. The son brought two cups. She realized the son was too short. The next thing she saw was the boy going to the toilet, flushing toilet water and bringing to the man. She drank two cups of toilet water. Why? The phone. Is that somebody this morning who is saying, Jesus? have mercy on you. Friends, we have all errored. We have all things inside us. It doesn't matter who we are, whether pastor, elder, member, we have them. But this morning we are saying, God, cleanse us. Change us. Pianist, there is, there, there, there is a fountain filled with blood. As he plays that song today, if you want to make that commitment, maybe some of you want baptism, maybe some of you want that just another commitment to God. Say, Lord, you know what is inside. Yes, and today you have, you have shown me. Yes, but I want a change. I want that transformation. If you are there, my brother, my sister, there is room at the cross. There is room at the cross. It doesn't matter whether you're one or two. You can walk from that. We'll pray with you, my friend. Just come. You want another touch? You can come. God bless you. Come. You want baptism. You can come. God bless you. I can see you there, my sister. I can see you, my brother. Come. These are days to come, friends. These are days to come. Come, my friends. He has seen what is inside. There is nothing we can hide. We are exposed and clear. The only place we can run to is a safe place. The strong tower of Jesus. God bless you. You can keep on coming, friend. My brother, you are seated there. You know your situation. You know it, it doesn't do good sitting down. My sister, you know, I know there is a voice that said, not now. No, we don't know when we die. The Bible says, if you hear the word of the Lord, don't harden your heart. God bless you, my friend. I can see you, my brother. I can see you, my sister. Come, time to come. Because there is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from the veins of Emmanuel. God bless you there. Do I see somebody coming again? There is room at the cross. We can come, friends. There is still room. My sister, don't see. Don't go back home the same. God bless you. 
Don't go back home the same, my brother. God bless you. God bless you there. I can see you there. God bless you. My mother, if your prayer life has gone down, it's time to come back. My brother, if your Bible study life has gone down, it's time to come back. Remember those days. You yourself, you know better. No one has answers. You have them. You can rekindle. Ah, oh, we can rekindle our return of faithful tithes and offering. God is saying we need to come. As we do this song, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from the veins of Emmanuel. I ask the chorus to come. And as they come, as they come to sing this song, you can just be coming because there's room at the cross. There's room at the cross. There is a fountain filled with Come, come now. From a man will say, You can come, my friends, and see as blind. Don't sit, my friend. There's room still. Central Church, this is your time. This is your moment, my brother. Don't let this time pass you by. So stay so the guilty. You can keep on coming, keep on coming. Bring your hearts to Jesus Christ. The guilty. God bless you. God bless you. Keep on coming. Amen. Keep on coming. You might have a son. You might have a husband who does not Jesus. You can come and represent them. We'll pray. God is faithful. I don't know what you see in your house, but you can come. And there may I go by as he washed all my sins Sins away, washed all my sins away. God bless you as you come, as He washes our sins away. And there may I go while as He washed all my sins away. The dying, the dying feel rejoice. Are you rejoicing? Precious blood shall never lose its power. Keep coming, my brother, it shall never lose the power. Till all the ransom stage of God are safe to see no more. They are safe to see no more. God bless you, my sister. to see no more. Safe to see no more till all the ransom church of God are safe to, to see no more. You can keep on coming, keep on coming. And since and by faith I, I saw the stream that flowed with wounds of blood, the dimming love has been my theme, and shall be till I die, and shall be till I die, and shall be till I die. Redeeming love has been my theme, and shall.
up for me, for me a broad front free reward, a golden harp for me. We thank the Lord, we can edit on that. We can ask the church to be standing. You might be in the congregation, beloved friends. Maybe you are sick, you're not feeling well. Maybe you're depressed because of situations. Maybe inside your house, things are not adding up. Maybe inside your marriage, situations are difficult. Maybe inside your beauty, your business, things are hard. There is a God who is faithful. He can change your story. When you come to him with open hearts and tell him to take full preeminence, God is faithful. If you have that because you can't come, I want you to raise up your hand and God will see your situation. I can see you. God bless you there. Just raise him. God bless you. God bless you even as we pray. Eternal God in heaven, this day we come because there is a quiet place of rest. Near to the heart of God. We come, Heavenly Father, because no man can fully comprehend your ways. There is no man that can reach your ability. That's the reason you are God. Some they call you El Shaddai, the mighty God. Some they say God, El Elyon, the most high God. Some they say Jehovah, Jireh, the provider. But today we call you our savior. Because you know our situation, we need salvation like never before. Father, we bring all our sins at the foot of the cross. Sins done in privacy. Sins where we feel nobody sees, we bring them. Because today you have told us you see the insight. Forgive us, dear Father. May we begin on a brand new page, my Savior. May you wipe away everything and help us today to change and to walk the path of Jesus. Give us repentant hearts, O oh God. Give us loving hearts, O oh God. Give us evangelistic hearts, O oh God. Give us a praying church, O oh God, that we, when we come together, we will stand as a church on the rock of Jesus, and the song shall be, the church is moving on. Amen. Father, we pray for blessings in this church. Look at your children raising up their hands. Some are depressed, my father. Some their marriages are breaking. Some there is no peace, arguments all the time. Love was lost way back. Lord, I pray you who restores everything, restore love and peace in that house. I pray in Jesus' name, dear father, for that business that is going down. May you revive it, my father. I pray for that brother looking for a job, for a house, for a partner to be with. I pray the Lord you shall bless them. Because you have changed the stories of many. We, we, we hear, oh God, how we change the story of Israel. From Egypt to the promised land. We hear how you change the story of David. From a shepherd boy to a king. You can change our stories. Somebody sick, dear father. You are the great physician. I pray that you touch them in a very special way. Doctors have their report. But you have a report. You say you are God that heals us. My God and my father, your children are standing here. Some Lord desire baptism. Some come for another commitment. Some, Lord, they say they backslided. Whatever their situation, you embrace as Israel. Embrace them, my Father. May they be yours once again, dear Father. May they live a faithful life until that day when you come. If we are to die before you come, may we die in Jesus. May help us to be faithful to the very end. To hold on to this truth, dear Father. May you bless Lusaka Central. May you bless their pastor. Bless their elders. May they bring the flock together and lead them to greener pastures. Reminding them every day that the coming king is at the door. Thank you for today. Bless us as we continue enjoying the blessings of the Sabbath. It is in Jesus' name we pray. May the saints say amen. amen. Surely, surely, the Lord has been here, surely angels still linger here. I hear music soft on my ear.
people are standing here. I think you know, don't sit. You can see the congregation, but our friends that came to the front would want to meet you in the vest. I don't know the elders. Maybe could they go in? So we can all let's all move in here. Yes. Thank you so much. Don't go to sit, please. Just let's move to the vestry. Let's all move there. God bless you for your commitment, for your love for Jesus Christ. Let's all move there. The leadership is there to meet us. Thank you. So, dear brothers and sisters, God bless you until we meet again at the foot of the cross. Amen. So, Envoy who will be dispersing us. Envoy expression. Six, be strong, technical. Number six, number six, be strong. Number six, be strong in the Lord.
to serve the Lord. Born to serve the Lord. Born to serve the Lord. Sabbath school. Born to serve the Lord. Born to serve the Lord. Sweet and Sabbath school. Born to serve the Lord.
Good morning, everyone. I was tempted to say happy Sabbath, but I need to remind that today is just Thursday. Just let us wait for a second. They will prepare the presentation to have here now. Please, if our colleagues can organize all the details for the opening words, please. I hope everybody can be traveled well, arrived well here, and uh, may God bless your time among us. You know, we prepared everything to have you here. These days with you are very special days for us. We expect these days for the entire year because now our family is complete. You come to give us the flavor of the church, the front line, and it's something very, very precious for us. Well, friends, brothers and sisters, welcome to the LEAD Conference. Let me say something. If you are unfamiliar with the LEAD Conference, let me try to explain a little bit more to you that this acronym, LEAD Conference, is a program that you have for leadership training for mission. This event happens annually during the first day of the annual council. And every year, we explore a different aspect of our call to be the salt of the earth and the life of the world. For this year, the emphasis of the LEAD conference is disciple making and reclaiming as part of our mission refocus initiative. You know, we can have 